Well, here we are one more time at the dork table. And this time I'm not going to have uh, Uncle Vinny or Aunt Mary come along to bail me out. So we're going to try to do a solo again. And tonight we're, I uh, hmm, guess we're on the normal places where where Grim streams this stuff. And, <laughs> and nothing's changed the <laughs> in, in the last week, four days. So um, I, I'm going to just say hey to the to the folks out at the RLM. That's pretty much what I keep track of anyway. And we got tonight, uh, we're at the dork table on the 29th of September in 2018. And, and we're going to say hey to uh, Barman Grimner, Miss Kate, there's a lot of names today, Phantom, Asmo2, hey Asmo, uh, Chloe, Chalcedony, Chloe, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle. That one. Cyborg got kind of talkative today. It was fun. And we have D underscore C, Dakota, Echelon, Me, Frumpy, Graham Z, Gromit, Guest 151499, IBDC, Java Doctor 2, J Dread, Wine and Taco, and Kozu Kozu is back. I think Kozu's a bot. Uh, layer 8, Master Brow. Oh, Lord, this is a good one. Nusquam underscore. <laughs> Poxified, Poxphone, Pone Sauce, Rain, RLM Fluke, Rob Works, Rome Sock Puppet, Skittle, and my uh, my last hostage, Vinny. So anyway, we're we're back to doing this stuff alone. My partners don't uh, they don't stay loyal to me on Saturday, so I have to be a dork and go on Saturday and do it by myself. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, so I'm looking over mines and I see this really bizarre Al Aldous Huxley, the guy with the uh, animal farm and all that kind of stuff, I suppose. Um, Anyway, so it uh, says here, and it gets really confusing, so I'm going to try to read this slow because it threw me off. The real hopeless victims of mental illness are to be found among those who appear to be most normal. Many of them are normal because they are so well adjusted to our mode of existence because their human voice has been silenced so early in their lives that they do not even struggle or suffer or develop symptoms as the neurotic does. They are normal not in what may be called the absolute sense of the word. They are normal only in relation to a profoundly abnormal society. I didn't even write this. Their perfect adjustment to that abnormal society is a measure of their mental sickness. These millions of abnormally normal people live in without fuss in a society to which, if they were fully human beings, they ought not to be just adjusted. And Aldous Huxley strikes again. There you go. Now, that's kind of a wordy way of saying we're doing things in a abnormal way we probably shouldn't be doing it and uh we me and Cirque have a have a yearly guest come to the dark deep reaches of Denmark for a visit and uh we have Tom visiting us again from Canada this time in September and there's no particular month people just kind of pop up when you know uh when their stars get all fucking lined up and everything. Hey, Dork Cakes. Dork showed up late. Oh, Dork. Dork Cakes just got here. I didn't see your name, sir. I must have been blinded by the Aldous Huxley link. <laughs> anyway, so, um, yeah, we've we've uh, been together almost five years now. So, But every year somebody comes to, to visit us in our, our little Casa Grande out here in the wilds of Denmark. And this time we got a repeater. So... Hmm. Well, wait. This is what well, this is two in the same year for the um, for the first times. But it's made up for for a lack. We had a we had a nice long period of adjustment 
you know, me and Cert getting comfortable here. And uh, now people are more comfortable with us, and we're like a, I don't know, like a staple. They know if they want to get away from where they're at for a bit and have a few days off, they can, hey, let's go to Denmark and hang out with the dorks. And uh, I wanted to say that, let Tom know that, hey, anything, you know, anything people want to do that's good, they should go out of their way to try to do it. You know, I traveled when I wanted to. <clears throat> of course, the the system was a lot more lax in those days. You know, like the, the link. If you If you give the proper directions to the proper person, you get a pr perfect result depending on the participation. And then there's us. Uh-oh, my lighter died. Help, help. S-O-S. Lighter replacement. Lighter replacement. <laughs> I got some on the kitchen table there if you don't have any there. Anyway, so uh, I think what we've managed to do is give all the wrong people the support that they need to enslave us, basically. But the words that they use to do it are so misleading and such misrepresentation. Blinded by the dorks. I don't know, Grim. You don't. You don't seem to be too blind to the to the dork thing. Um, mm. Vinny was was really disappointed with the first <laughs> explanation of dork last week. He had to he had to dig to get the right answer that suited him, because. I keep telling him all the all the things that you think you can prove as easily as you can prove them, you can disprove them with another link. Not to say that everything on the internet's crap, but probably half of it, maybe maybe more than half of it by this point. I mean, if if you're not spending your time looking at links of uh, other people's dinners or where they're going to vacation this time of year, then. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I wouldn't be all that interested in that. I'd rather be like Tom. At In my day, I was that, that way. I got up and, and decided I want to go do something, so I followed through and went and did it. And, you know, the, the people in, in life that are around you that uh, they don't really, I don't think they've got that drive to, to follow through on shit. Hey, look who's back. Oh, Lord. Hmm. Eh, maybe not. Maybe maybe it's uh it's me looking at them and I'm I'm missing something. But I did a lot of traveling. I wasn't impressed with all my fellow travelers. They didn't all seem to be international and worldly. I'm sure I I shared a bus or a plane or a whatever with a sheep herder and a minister once or twice and didn't even know it. You know, uh, when you travel, you're kind of it's kind of being invisible unless you want to draw a lot of attention to yourself with your dressing, the you know, way you're dressed, or how much money you think you want people to, to see that you have the illusion of having. But, oh, it's really, uh, my mind is very scattered today. Me and Cirque, we're going to, see, this is why I did the dork table, is I don't want to do the traditional, oh, the president did this, and oh, the SCOTUS did that, but... <laughs> I can see the entertaining side of it at this point in my day. <laughs> uh, I think we'll go with um, stories of travel and tales of excitement from the dork side today on the Dork Table program. So, hmm, I'd like to focus my mind on something in particular, but it's just... Uh, I'm jumping from shows I did with Mary to shows I did with Vinny to shows I've tried to do alone before. And we've got a message. I'm just going to read it blind out loud. I hope it's good. From Grimnir. says, if you can, as you do your show, just dot, hi, jot down the highlight bullet points or summaries of your discussion. You know, I've tried that and... Uh, I don't have a, a good judge of balance. I'm very off the cuff. My mind just goes where... It, it, I've listened to the show, and and at the end of it, when I think, wow, what a waste of time that was, and I listen to the show back a couple of days later, and, and most of the time, it's it's easier with another person to speak to, but it, they're, not that, they're not as disappointed as I think when I'm doing it. 
but I've jotted down notes from previous shows about wonderful ideas I had. And uh, sadly, I'm probably one of the few people on Earth that holds the the idea, or at least takes it to any level of uh, action in life. Um, well, let's use Tom. I, I'll get a okay. Do I have your approval to discuss you behind your back while you're sitting over there, Tom? Okay. Well, Tom, I met th- Tom through Circle, and he's from a foreign land far away across the water called Canada. And we have sat and discussed many topics about the countries we're all from. And one one of the things that caught my attention was his interpretations of America as a Canadian aren't that much different than Cirque's uh, of America as a Dane. So, and the sad thing about that is America's not the apple of the eye of the outside of American. The, the people that aren't from there... They're not, <laughs> flash random, yeah, thanks, Grim, but the the people from other countries that I've encountered since I've been here, they, the ones that love America have the funds, hey, cakes, to go to, Amer- to America if they choose to and visit it. Well, some people have all the luxuries of paperwork, uh, like perhaps you may have yourself a uh, dual citizenship where America has your documents. Well, I've tried to tell people on this dork table before in my history, the passport, as an example, it's disguised as a travel document. The truth of it is, I think it's a tax in, it's a tax form to keep track of you while you're in another land. So, over the years, I've had the chance to talk to people that hold dual citizenship and they tell me that depending on the financial transaction, the government of America wants a cut or it gives you uh, an exemption, but the country that you're from does the opposite. So there's really no way that the the tax collector isn't going to come out ahead of you on it. No matter which side, if they give it you the exemption in the States, they get you in Canada or vice versa. Hmm. Now, I, I've picked on all countries equally over the years. I'm not particular to, you know, one country to me isn't any better or worse than the other one. But the the perceptions that we hold towards these things that we don't do, but we live them through other people, we all got our fucking little nasty opinions about shit. That's how they get us to go to war, in case you didn't know. Just like the Nazis, when the Nazis did the, what was that? How do you say that? Reichstag or Ra- Satan? Reichstag. Okay, the Reichstag. The Absolutely. They did their own crime. They blamed it on their enemy, and the the public bought the story. And then by the time that the government clears up the mess years down the road, for one, nobody gives a shit anymore. They talk a big, you know, oh, I'm so mad, but... The crime's been done, you've been to war, it's over, so now what? What happens in reality is you grab a shovel and you start cleaning up the mess. Well, I don't I don't know if everybody's in, uh, aware of that little detail. There's a, there's a country running around the world right now, <clears throat> I won't name them America, and uh, they're, they're very violent people, they like to bomb stuff. And, you know, they got this other country. And it's right in the middle of the fucking Middle East. It's like like somebody just drew a circle in the center of it. And then they went, hey, you know who should live there? I think what the Jews would do pretty good there in Israel. <laughs> we don't have an Israel, sir. Well, we'll just take Palestine and we'll, we'll polish it until it's Israel. Mm. Well... If you told people what truly goes on in politics and wars and history and all this crap that we get told, at the time that these things take place, I don't think they would be a war. I don't think that without the lies and the deceptions and the threats, we're going to give Russia sanctions. Well, oh, they're going to wait. It wasn't Russia. It was Iran. This is what got my attention. They're going to sanction, financially sanction Iran to punish them. So now what they're going to do is the Russians are going to go in and save the day. (laughs) 
well, okay, you got two choices, right? This is the global, this is the way we're told. You got the Americans are the good guys, and you got the Russians, and they are the bad guys. So, you got the good, you got the bad, you got the good, you got the bad, you got the good, you got the bad. Well, over the years, they've traded places, and now the Americans are the bad guys, and the Russians are the good guys. Well, how is that possible? I mean, Jesus Christ, you guys, you treat each other like you're swapping some girlfriend out that you don't want in the first place. Countries, my ass, people, who gives a fuck about anybody anymore? And and if you do, how can you do it outside of your little confines of your, your domicile, your, your prison or your apartment or your trailer, or whatever the fuck you live in? If you don't live alone, the people you live with, that is the world that you got. But we've been convinced of all this weird shit. Like, uh, if I give $10 to the Church of the Sacred Bleeding Heart of Jesus in uh, Los Angeles, that my dreams will come true. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I saved myself the 10 bucks. I never even did the thing, the prayer thing. And all my dreams came true anyway. And uh, I was talking with Tom about this inadvertently it comes up in the conversation now because it's appropriate and when you age you have a choice of um, being extravagant or being moderate financially in life and some people like this show off and oh i've got a gold card and oh i've got a mercedes and oh i got 15 you know bedrooms in my house but what they don't brag about is the debt that goes along with the illusion that they own all this crap that nobody can touch because it belongs to me. You, you go away. Oh, I am busy. Oh. And it brings the selfish twat out of the nicest guy. Well, some people grow up and as they age, their tastes not diminish, but they soften. They don't have to have the 24 karat gold watch. Eh, settle for a Timex. <laughs> Well, maybe not a Timex, but, you know, it doesn't matter in the end if you tell your time on a Timex or a Rolex, it's still another, hey, I'm Rolex Stone, hey, Grimmer. Uh, it, it's it's a man-made thing. Time is just as uh, just as much bullshit as politics or, or the language that we bastardize daily because of how we were taught to use it. And people like Mary and... Uh, Vinny have done a lot more what you would call research into to defining all these things to be shown. And I had an easy time with the uh, internet when I first found it because I think that it was clear to me that the things in life that were wrong were wrong. I didn't understand how it got all screwed up until I actually saw it in print about like the fractional reserve banking but when i saw the links that went along with the internet that little you know little stories a two minute story about fractional reserve banking and it took you know it took having to read modern money mechanics down to a two page hey what's this this looks kind of interesting i'll take a look at that all right well all this internet stuff is all well and good but the audience the uh, internet attracts as far as to be a source of information is so small. It's It d doesn't really seem that way when I'm doing it. But when I sit back and think about, hmm, here's a link on the, uh, on the, the YouTube. And it's about something that has uh, been pitched to the public as a lie for many years. And here's the truth about it. 200,000 people saw it. Out of that 200,000 people that took the time to look at the link, how many people believed what they saw? <laughs> you have a lifetime, as well as I do, believe me. You have a lifetime of indoctrination. However it was sent to you, however you drew it, you got it. Mine's a little different than some people's, and yours might be a lot like them, so that makes you one of these guys. And I don't... I don't see the benefit anymore in, in joining a, a gang to be powerful and, you know, something to protect me. So I've gone 
I think I've done pretty well with the nonviolent stand that I adopted in my older years. Well, it was halfway through my life. And, uh, mm. thanks, honey. The lighter worked. Uh, so if you adjust your, uh, it's like having a car with a carburetor. You know, if you, if your car, if you get, your carburetor gets a little dirt in it or something, it can throw your whole machine off. You can still drive it, but as you drive it, if you don't clean that carburetor uh, and probably your gas tank at some point, <laughs> you're, you're going to have a complete lockdown. You're not going to be able to drive the car. So with the medicine thing, I started to compare myself to a machine in that sense of a low maintenance machine usually doesn't run good. You hear them running down the street, tapping. <laughs> they don't put, you know, they got oil leaks. They got muffler exhaust leaks. They've got this, that, and the other. And uh, I have those problems now physically, I suppose, in a sense with the, you know, the arthritis, but the rose hip that uh, between my wife and Mary, I don't remember who exactly, so I'll probably credit the wrong one. But I think, my wife told me about getting the rose hip, and I found it in a powder form. Now, being of the Jewish persuasion, I do despise pain retail, ladies and gentlemen of the dork world. So I buy the stuff like a year's supply at a time, and and uh, and it's not out of being able to afford it. It's just out of having it, and you know, I'm hoarding my medicine like a like a good good old Jew should. I said. <laughs> I don't know what would you call that, sir, but uh, I've got my yeah I've got my big old jug of turmeric and I got my big old jug of rose hip, and I've got a constant source of baking soda at the grocery, that I don't see that being interrupted. But at uh, living out here where I live, I sometimes think ahead, not like a prepper and oh the zombies are gonna eat me, but what well, should happen if that store chain should. Um, fall they moved from one part of town down the little road to another building so they could as easily as they shut the first place down and open the second place they could shut it down again and i would have no uh physical contact to go down and get my shit and then i'd have to rely on the interwebs and have it all delivered hey dr cooper ooh, the cat came down uh, this must be a successful show because the doctor doesn't mess around <laughs> and, and he just went right by me eh, interesting the dr cooper cat hmm. well <clears throat> let's see anybody out there got any good rape allegations for old kavanaugh i know that's been on the internet for like two fucking weeks you know i'm 59 now i just had a birthday last week right so somebody did me wrong in 1974 and by god that woman's going to become a senator? Nope. You know what she did to me when I was a child? <laughs> and the, the sick, sad part about this, this fucking joke of a society we live in is that in certain parts of the world, look, you might not believe this. I hope you're sitting down. Maybe you write this part down. In certain parts of the world, all you have to do to ruin another person is accuse them of something. You don't have to have any proof. You don't have to do anything more than call the cops and go, blah, 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 blah. John Smith fucked my cat in 1936. And by God, I want something done about it now. And then they look for John Smith and they go, hey, you know, what a coincidence since he's running for a, a seat in the White House. I think we'll fuck him up. Now, I don't know what your sexual orientation has to do with your ability to carry the Monsanto or the Coca-Cola or the fucking Goldman Sachs chant to Washington so that you don't have to be a, a, a working class slug and you can live good and have good this and good that because that's what politics turned into. Take the money out of this shit. 98% of these motherfuckers wouldn't show up to run, let alone work. <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen a group picture of the of the Senate? <laughs> oh my God, they to me it looks like a failed experiment from the the Isle of Doctor Moreau. <laughs> oh, Marlon Brando just sitting there going, <laughs> it worked. I mean, crying out loud. 
We have lawyers and doctors in seats of political decision writing legislature that you have to follow <laughs> because you're, you're a citizen and this is for your own good. And isn't it just a coincidence that by the time that guy gets out of that seat in two years or gets reelected to it again, he's going to be worth a lot of money. <laughs> they, <laughs> what do they call it now? Um, they don't call it bribery anymore. They call it uh, lobbying. <laughs> I'm going to lobby you until you beg me to stop. <laughs> I know. Well, see, even dork cakes. Okay, My friend from far away in the dork cake land, he says, Senate is pure dot 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 illusion. So, that just tells me that I'm not the only one that sees this this particular way. You know, but I am probably one of the few people in, in the conversation that I have about it that it doesn't physically affect because, well, for one, I really don't believe it's real. And the other part of it is I'm thousands of miles away in my nice little cubby hole and there's no bombing, you know. There's no uh, peace rallies here. There's no marches. The uh, This town, the only time I go into public and find a group or a crowd is when these Danes are out having some kind of family fun out in town. There's not, uh, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Mm. Yeah, I give the dork uh, cake some credit for his opinion. And he, wait, we got Rob Works too, but yep, yeah, it's, he's agreeing with Rob Works. Way hey, Rob snuck in. And you were naked. That sexual assault. Yeah, but, she, Your Honor, she looked every bit of 15. <laughs> I mean, they'll just lower the fucking consent rate until the, until it's okay to rape a 12-year-old, for fuck's sake. We live in, yeah, the land of illusion. And it, I know, I don't live there anymore. I was talking to Tom about that. I have a cousin in America. Hmm. And she, she was a worker bee and a Republican, and she's a, you know, loves the Jesus and all like that. And it's been married to the same guy forever. And she thinks I'm insane because of my political stand, which is, it's all bullshit. Not, well, the Republicans are wrong. and doo -doo -doo. No, I think the Republicans and the Democrats deserve each other. I'd like to see you all go to the same planet. Please leave me alone. But you know what? They wouldn't do it. So you know what? I compromised. And life gave me an opportunity to go somewhere. And I, I've told this story a hundred times too. I fought tooth and nail not to leave America in 2011. But once, once I did it, the circumstances around my being where I was made it going back, made going back just impossible. It would have... Um, it would have created more damage than good. So, and then the longer I was away from America, the less appealing it became. Then after that, well, I went through like a transition, I would suppose. So I'm starting to think, oh, maybe I'll go down to the Spain or some some warm place and, you know, explore and be, you know, Vasco da Coma and look around and do shit. Well, I met I met somebody online on a fluke and things changed and I came to Denmark and this has been uh, it's been quite the adventure in its own little way but very slow uh, me and Cirque have a nice peaceful quiet life I think you know uh, we were talking with Tom about that earlier because we had planned to go out to dinner and this and that tonight but you know we've done all that stuff in the big city over the years you know separately so doing that together it's 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 the staying home and having a meal that's the thing that's uh that's the draw to be here not not the going out to to a bar <laughs> so who believed that ever happened to me but you know if if you got lemons uh get a bottle of rum or what is it vodka or something and make some kind of drink and get drunk don't worry about it so much. We make the biggest shit out of absolutely nothing. As, okay, oh, my TV set program is canceled. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? While the electricity you get sold is second fucking rate. And, and you don't get taught this. So when you hear it, 
you don't even know what you're listening to. And if you do know it, it's just repetitious crap that you've you tend to. I tend to say see that when I see, hear the same thing over and over and over, and I already know it. And there comes a time in in the story where it's not reinforcing anything any further. So I'm kind of stuck today with my mind jumping around from story to story because I don't want to become uh, mentally rutted, you know, where I'm stuck on one thing. I like the freedom of thought. You know, freedom of thought is, there you go, it's a wonderful thing. Doesn't mean you have to be a freedom of act (laughs) or deed. Just means you got to be a free thinker. The doing, uh, that that's a matter of of interpretation, I think, because uh, like uh, two people will see the cops pull over somebody, and one guy will go, "Oh, I'm glad they got that crook," and the other guy, without knowing any details, and the other guy will go, "Hey, the cops shouldn't pull people over like that." So you'll have exact opposite opinions about the two people looking at the exact same thing, which is perfectly fucking normal. That is average. Well, I say normal. I know Moose doesn't like it, but it's a good word because we it gives us a, like a foundation to start at. Because I think that even I have my level of looking at another person down the street and going, wow, that fucker's weird to me. You know, holy shit, what the fuck is that? I mean, we all think it at times. So I've assumed because I have it, I'm just like everybody else. Ain't nothing special about me that uh, we all got it. It's all the same for everybody. Whatever you got, it's because that's what you want. You're not stuck with anything. Nobody owns you. You just believe or you don't know, one or the other. So we're, we're living in this open-air prison. And some people like me, Tom, he, we've got these little magic passport cards, right? And you show them to the little suit with the little badge and the little cap. And they, they pat you on the head and you go through their fucking line and do what you got to do. But after a while, I think, I don't know, I just got tired of the of the game of the travel. Not so much the travel. But, yeah, the the way that the TSA operates and the, church, the, the searching of... Boy, I hadn't been handled that much by a fella since the doctor gave me my life when he pulled me out of my mom screaming and yelling. My God, those TSA guys want to, hey, what are you looking for down there, sport? (laughs) Look in my eyes. (laughs) Up here, focus. (laughs) But no, they're looking in your pants for guns and you've been through all these damn x-ray machines and you've put half your fucking clothes in a basket to be x-rayed. And if you say anything, because I just about did, I was getting a little little mad with a kid in uh can't think Aberdeen I think I was in I had a short flight to there and then one to Heathrow anyway but I get off one plane go right into the airport and the first thing these people want to do is search me again and I asked I said what what do you think I got on the plane waiting for me to bring in here are you are you giving me a attitude sir oh, no <laughs> I was trying to but it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> they win. So when you're fighting a dragon with, with arms like that, there just comes a time where you, you have to you have to either shoot him back or lay down and, and die. So no, nah, I chose the the uh, the third option was to uh, avoid escape it by any means. Yes, yeah, smile politely and let him grab my balls and go forward. And I don't want to do that anymore. I'm too old of a man now to be uh, pushed around by a bunch of 12-year-olds with acne and a gun telling me what I got to do because they're afraid of me, you know? Wow. I don't remember being afraid of anybody when I was 20, 30 years old. I thought, shit, people that are afraid just don't know how to live. Their their fear is, that's the real them coming through. It ain't got nothing to do with me. And here I am all these years later, and I can say, hmm. I think I was on to something back then. Uh, but I don't know. Other people have diff- different agree- opinions about it. I'm going to go to the RLM chat. I'll probably regret it because I can't read too good. But they're talking about the Supreme Court justice and his interest in the female anatomy. 
You know, I think that maybe they should just change the rules in the SCOTUS and say that if you hadn't molested somebody in your 30s, you're not fucking normal and you don't belong on the court. End of story. <laughs> think about the good fuckers that would end up holding the seat. It would be like a, it'd be like a Marx Brothers movie. You'd see Harpo and Groucho and Chico and Zeppo. I think there was another one, but I can't remember his name. I'm enjoying a nice drink of my elixir. Well, so I guess we've just come to the point where we if you want to fuck somebody up, you just got to yell rape. 30 years ago, they raped me. Or, uh, yeah, call him a pedophile. That's the, the new... <laughs> the new nigger is pedophile. You can't say... Well, you can say, you can say Jew. What, how do you insult us, kike? You can say kike and spick, and but you can't say nigger, but you can say um, what else? Well, I know they got us pretty limited. The the uh, seven words you can't say have turned into like seven thousand words, and I can't remember them all, so I'm always tripping over myself. And, uh, look at this. We have the cakes. We have the Miss Kate. Miss Kate must have came back, or she picked us up on her radio thing. Well, I miss Vinny at times like this. My mind just went. Mm. Um, looking back through my notes, as Grim had suggested, and uh, mm. well, no, I've brought this up to Vinny, but we didn't really discuss it anywhere. But I think voting should be a punishment, not not a right, not a gift. I think that you should be, you know, you should get a, a ticket from the voting authority and that makes you responsible to go to your computer and sign in to the, the state organized central brain and type in your secret name and your secret word and force you to vote and leave the rest of us the fuck alone. But with that vote, you get... A tattoo on your forehead that says V for voter. And all your peers can recognize you as the stupid mofo that went and supported the shit we live in today. <laughs> That's why I'm so popular with my peers. Because I'm so dead set against everything that we have supporting us in life. It's all crap. Uh, let me see. Any, uh, Miss Kate, she says this. I like this Miss Kate quote. Any person that feels the need to rule has a problem. Well, yeah, Miss Kate, but that is not how that, that's not pitched to us that way. It's pitched to us that you could someday be a man of great importance and occupy a seat. You know, it's, they tell you the truth when they go in. But when you come out, what it's it's like a cycle on a dryer. You know, you go in wet, but you come out dry. Well, this one, you go in dry. <laughs> you come out wet, beat up, scarred, tattered. You look like shit, like you'd been out drinking for two or three days. That's a voter. And the system is so well thought out that the people that support it are the ones that get financially, for one, financially abused the worst. Possibly the, the things that you can do to somebody that supports the state is tenfold worse than the things that you can do to the guy that doesn't. Because to support the state and be a part of the state, you got to have money. Money, <clears throat> money, and it helps to have more money. Because uh, poor people don't seem to go anywhere in politics. And when they start out poor, you know what they get? They get rich. They get rich because they join the secret club. And the secret club knows what's going to do this and how that's going to work and da 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 da. And the rest of us, what do we got? We've got this illusion of a, a society that looks out for the benefit of its children. It doesn't do anything of the kind. I think it was Mary that found out the hard way about the police. Uh, when I met Mary on, on the internet, I don't think she had a, a bad feeling towards the police of any kind, never had a reason to. 
They don't harass her. She's grown up where she lives. She knows everybody, community, small community. But what ended up happening is one of the her children <clears throat> had a friend that they'd grown up with. And he was a slow learner, uh, autism or some form of it. And he ended up running from the police in his car. I don't know how they gave an autistic person a car and a license. But anyway, what ends up happening is the cop freaks out when they catch him and, and he shot him. Shot him dead. Some kid. Unarmed. No reason really to shoot him except the cop was afraid for his life. Well, when I was growing up, if the cop would ever said a thing like that, the other cops would have, for one, probably knocked the shit out of him for being a pussy. And then he would have left. There was no, well, you must go. There was, you stay, and this is what you're going to meet every day until you change your fucking ways. But life has been manipulated in the last 40 years. So we get told something. We you know, look right at, right at a video of the police shooting somebody, whatever, and your mind will not say these people got to go. I don't know why that works that way. It, the police don't help you. The, how many people on the RLM don't know that? Well, it's like, if I think the numbers are about 10% are for the police and the other 90 say, fuck the police. In those exact words I'm quoting. Right, Rob Grimm and others. Well, I agree with that. I don't need the police. The police have never been my friend. It never did anything for me. In fact, let's go back in my childhood and uh, I'll go back to the 1971. And whatever happened, I was at school, went to school, wasn't feeling good. I got hot, so I had a fever and the, the nurse at the thing said why don't you just go home and take the rest of the day just go home and go to bed and I really was not feeling well and I really did go home but I forgot my house key because in that period of time my father insisted we lock the door and blah 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 and I had a key but I forgot it but what I did have was a window I left open in case I lost or forgot my key because I didn't want to get stuck outside well, it was a school day. One of the neighbors saw somebody go into the house. They didn't recognize it was me, so they called the police. Anyway, I'm in, laying there in my room, and I hear somebody walk, running around behind the, the house near my back door where my room is. So I go open the door, and there is this cop from the bottom of the door to the top of the door, from the side of the door to the other side of the door. I could barely see the light behind this guy who was so big. And he pulls his gun on me and starts, what are you doing here? We, we got a call. And I said, I live here. And he puts his gun away, takes me to the neighbor, goes, hey, does he live there? And she goes, yeah. Oh, okay. That's how they dealt with it back in 1971. Now, <coughs> today, that might, not, <laughs> that might not work out so well. <laughs> the, the links I've seen. Jeez, I, I saw a link this morning of a, a traffic jam. I, it looks like a two-little country, two-lane road, and they have the cop car. He's got the traffic backed up, and there's a, I don't know, could have been a, a possum for all I know, about a two-foot-long animal in the middle of the road trying to cross. Well, this cop is so terrified of this freaking animal, instead of moving to the side and let the thing run into the to the trees like it was trying to do he took out his weapon and he shot it and he didn't even kill it the first time so he had to go around behind the damn thing and get into one of those military kneeling holding your gun like it's some kind of big deal and taking aim from five feet to shoot this thing and actually kill it could have been a person for all i mean it didn't seem to me like this cop had any concern for nothing just he panicked like a little girl i mean have you ever seen a kid pull its hand away from a puppy that was what i saw and then but then i saw him shoot it and i was like wow it made me sad and i don't even care about possums i think Vinny would just make a meal out of it but if you live in that rural kind of area and you're that unfamiliar with the wildlife and they give you a gun i guess you got what you paid for i <laughs> 
tax your tax money saving you. You know, they were trying to make it so the poor thing would get run over by a car and the cop shoots it <laughs> in the middle of the damn street. Oh, you know, on a country road. So I don't know what that really represents in my mind except for the uh, the misguided collective judgment of a society that's so been so deprived of the of what makes us operate properly, you know, physically, a good food, good water, good electricity, you know, the old three uh three things I complain about. Hey, moose and cakes. Ha <laughs> ha. I heard moose was going to get a RV and travel the wonderful American states. But I don't know. I didn't hear it from you, but I I I read somebody say that. Maybe they, you mentioned it on the radio or we're bringing it up and that would be a kick. Miss Moose on the loose in a caboose <laughs> all over the place. Then you wouldn't have to worry about camping either. You just put your put park your ass in your little mobile house and do whatever you damn well please. But on the other hand, she may, she may not. Maybe I'll just wait long enough for the her to catch this and give me a definitive I'm I was talking or I'm planning. Oh, she's saying good morning to the big man Grim. Poor Grim. <laughs> Working Grimner. He's he's the RLM towel boy. Whenever I have a computer problem, you know I I had thought I had a computer problem. <laughs> and, and it turns out well, what I wanted to do just complicating the hell out of buying a camera because. I don't know. It was like the the most obvious answer to the question, but I'm trying to figure out how to put this set, how to put this version of a uh, operating system on that computer because that computer's got this and this one doesn't and da 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 da. And <laughs> at the end he goes, "Why don't you just buy a computer or buy a camera?" And I went, "Hey, <laughs> wow!" From the minds of old people, huh? Grim saved me, but it looks like a. Uh, here we go, spinning gears again. It looks like old Linux is having some uh, social instabilities with their board of uh, leadership. Because uh, the new thing now is to be, uh, what is it, politically correct on the interwebs. So they're going to put guidelines on us, uh, open source um, tech, tech network, right? I'm probably saying the words wrong, but... It's a. It's not Windows. It's pretty much the opposite of Windows, but they now want to make it equal to or the same as it. So I guess because the government can't shut the Internet down like they'd like to, what they're going to do is they're going to just throw rocks at us and make it as difficult for us to use this thing as they can. So it's like a race. you know. You, if they get these laws in place in America, you're finished because... That's like the EU. You know, once they make a law, they, until they can add it, make it worse, you're stuck with the law they tell you you got. Oh, law. Hmm. I'd like to be alone and right. So I could take I could take care of the whole thing in three, three laws, period. And everybody would be, from that moment on, everything would work fine. But then, see, then you're stuck back with, well, what if people didn't didn't obey the law? Well, I've always wondered, what actually makes people break the law in the first place? Is Could it be 90% of the reason that a law is broken is because somebody wrote that law down? <laughs> hey, imagine, if they didn't write it down, what would it be? It would be your responsibility for you to do that under your own fuel, not depend on the state to enforce it. And the, and the crap that they con us into believing, you know, that's, oh, this is for your good. Like the safety safety belts in a car is, are, you get a safety belt when you get a bike? I didn't. I've never had a safety belt uh, on a bus, had them on an airplane. But why is it that the, the safety belt only applies to certain vehicles that, the government seems to think are more dangerous than others. And it's just the whole thing's about money. 
So I was t- trying to tell Goober months, months back. He was saying he had a little money problem. So I told him, buddy up with a lawyer. There's lawyers everywhere. Find out what the hell the law is going to force the public to purchase. And they call it insider trading, but oh, fuck, who cares? Insider trading. <sighs> Those people, that, it's all they do is inside trade. It's if you do it and you're not on their good graces and you get, you know, picked on. Eh, that's a good title to have. Hey, we're going to get Goober for insider trading. He bought a seatbelt company with money he borrowed from this other guy. Da, da, da. You know, and the illusion that that we're so we're so self-important and the government is after every fucking buddy that moves $10,000 and it's a big illusion by the way, folks. Not that it's not real. But it's that it's, you're, we're not as accountable as they want you to think. They got cameras everywhere. Oh, look at we're under surveillance. Not everywhere. <laughs> See, if you don't want to be in the camera, go away. Oh, go live somewhere where there's no cameras. And then people will go. But I can't leave. I have responsibilities. And well, uh, when I had responsibilities, I didn't snivel about my lack of freedom. When I had my freedom. I didn't snivel about responsibilities I wanted to have because I didn't have any. So I don't really understand that. I think that if you're living in a situation that you're not pleased in, change the situation. Why? Well, how do you think you're going to change the world around you? you ain't going to budge an inch. You know, People are going to do what they're going to do, how they're going to do it. And there's that 10% of people that are... Mm, snootier than the rest and they're going to steal and lie and cheat no matter what you do and the only way to stop some of these people is with violence but it's it's promoted out of us it's brought out of us through school and education church politics pit us at each other make us fight about but hillary's better than the donald no the donald's better than the hill dog no, it's just you got the head and the ass of the same fucking mutt. And you want to call it a purebred, and it's not. It is exactly what we think it is, I guess, to the individual. But that group think where, fuck, this leader is going to write a fucking law and at some astronomic level of uh, government administration that wouldn't hit you in a thousand years. But... I'm a voter. My voice counts. This stuff, it involves me. I don't think the Chinese are going to bat a fucking eyelash at Trump's little uh, tamper tantrum and his, uh, what did he call it, his tariffs on the Chinese. Because I read the Chinese got stuck with uh, like tons or billions of dollars worth of produce. I think it was cherries. Some kind of astronomical amount of food. So they just sell it to somebody else instead of dealing with the Americans. And if you look at the last, say, 100 years of American history, not what you were told, but dig past all that shit. Hey, hey, cakes. Um, If you did pass through all the lies and the deception and find out what really happened, you wouldn't want to support it anymore. I think that's what happened to me in, in a sense with... Other people, when I was growing up, were finding these things out. And I was a hanger-on. I was like 8, 9, 10 years old. And I had cousins that were teenagers. And they'd let me come along because I'd shut up and do what they told me. And part of the shutting up and and doing what I was told was, you know, listening to them talk amongst their own. And the things that I learned back then all came true in my later years. I was talking about this with, uh, with Vinny the other night. If I had listened to other people that had sat me down and specifically told me, this is how medical works, this is how this works, I could have saved myself years on top of some of the years I got away with. But with the medical thing, that was uh, more personal. You know, they played on me when I got sick. They played off my ignorance, and they played off the the fact that the people that they I was connected to were supporting their game. And the only thing that I think saved me, I'd have probably been croaked a long time ago if I had continued down the high blood pressure medicine uh, parade that I was on because I don't have it. 
and they've con- they convinced me that that was a daily constant problem that I and I figured out later was no I had that symptom that day because I didn't like the doctor I went in screaming I don't want to, I don't want to see this guy he's look at him no he can't help me I'm sick I want to get better not like him <laughs> well anyway we always have the history books you know to straighten us out and show us where we were wrong <laughs> <laughs> Rockefeller was like what 180 years old when he died this this year. The guy he the pictures of Rockefeller if that was the epitome of good health <laughs> the success of a of a life that was you know lived lived to the ex, to the extreme and the fullest he looked like Darth what was his name Darth some kind of sucked up version of Frankenstein. Let's say that. It was a very pleasing day to see the guy go but he's got family that's going to carry on his work and the the little bit of resistance that there is at at best i've seen some of the things that have led me to the doorway of freedom so to speak as for a link 250,000 people saw it 200 and and that sounds like oh that's a lot of people but out of 250,000 90% 90% of them either didn't believe it, don't care, don't want to know. So you got 10%. So 25,000 people saw that link and went, wow, we've been had. Now out of that percentage of people, how many of them actually did something to change it? Because we've been convinced over the last 40, 50 years, well, longer than that, but me, I've witnessed it since the 70s, is nature is a bad, very bad and the science is a very good, oh, very good. Science will save you. Well, when you look at the reality of all this shit, it's the science that's fucked the nature so that we could get in the shithole we're in now. And I don't really see a lot of resistance to it. I see a lot of people go, hey, I don't like it, but it's the only game in town. Just like me. But I think still knowing it, yeah, no matter how how little of a scratch it makes in your uh, in your outlook, knowing it gives you an advantage, even if you don't use it, because sooner or later something huge is going to happen in in the world. It always does. They give us some uh, what do they call it? They give us a crisis. This year it's been hurricanes and whatever it is, whether it's nature or America bombing the snot out of somebody, it doesn't matter. It's they need that 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 crisis and that immediacy and oh look at this so when the when the effects of the one crisis wear off you you can step right into a brand new crisis not miss a beat but what you don't seem to notice about it when it's happening is you forget the five crises that just happened so that you can put your attention on the one that you're presently in today so, so, how the hell do you stay out of it? I've been trying to. I've been avoiding this SCOTUS thing ever since it started. They do the same thing they did this with Roberts. They did it with the, the monkey before Roberts. They treat these freaking SCOTUS idiots like they're made out of fucking gold. You know, They'd be better off to go to some downtown, dig into the damn um, tents, find seven and nine random people... And just put them and call them SCOTUS to get the same fucking result without all the legal bullshit. You're going to have a percentage of people that are against this and for that. That's what it's about. So, instead of just let us use the, the idea that works the best and produces the best result... Let's throw human emotion and uh, judgment into this equation. We'll get an odd number of people, so we always have a split. Nobody will ever be able to agree. (laughs) And then we'll give them a lifelong position, too. they got to die to get out of this job. (laughs) I think, like, what, three, uh, three robes have been retired from SCOTUS in the last 80 years or something. The whole thing re- reeks to me of rigged game. And, you know, when, when I see cops and judges and all that horse shit in, this, in the Internet, I just feel like it's a, it's a performance, like a movie, like that Ozark thing I've been watching. You know, they, they just create more ways to, 
to consume and, and to hoard and to make sure that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if you're if it's money and, and shit you're chasing believe me anybody can do this you just got to find the scum bucket there's a scum bucket deep down in all of us right this is my theory way down there's that little hungry little two-year-old that wants to eat and will cry and do any whatever you got to do before you're you know aware to eat you're going to do it so if, if those uh, behaviors are modified <laughs> when you grow up, you can still be taught to behave that same fucking way when you're 20 as you did when you're two. And and I've noticed that uh, the more educated people lean towards that, that tantrum throwing, you're hurting my feelings. Oh, that's not fair. Fuck, I remember telling somebody that when I was a kid. That's not fair, so they punched me in the nose, too. You think that wasn't fair? Get up and see what happens now. So you either you learn to avoid the fight or you learn to sustain the fight. But one thing that never really happened, you don't win the fight. Even if I came out on the better side of a fight, part of me always felt bad because I didn't really want to do that. I felt if I didn't, it would have happened to me and I would have been beat up. So I had to defend myself. And like me and Vinny were arguing about, you know, the guy shot the guy and I call it an accident. You know, uh, when I use my judgment out of fear, the results are not intention. The results are accident because that's not the place I want to be. Of course, Vinny has, you know, Vinny's own way of seeing how the world works. Well, maybe he'll listen to the dork table today. And we'll carry it in into our new show we're going to start uh, Tuesday. We're no longer going to be the dork table on Tuesday night when we do our thing. And I think we've sorted it out to uh, noon his time, 7 o'clock in Denmark. Uh, what would that be? 1 o'clock on the east coast of the United States. And uh, we are I don't know if we're going to ever be more serious or any of that, but I think that having the two different shows did something to the computer and to help Grimm out, he asked us if we'd give the show a new name. Now, I don't know if that means it's going to change anything, but the name kind of inspired me. I came up with, we were talking about all the crap we always talk about, and he said, in a perfect world. And I saw the movie Clint Eastwood did, In a Perfect World. That's not where the idea came from. It came from the sources of energy that we survive on on a daily basis are inferior. So Vinny's version of it, he says, well, in a perfect world, you wouldn't have that problem. Okay, true, but that's a dream. And, you know, it's wonderful to, to want something that's never going to happen. But I try to leave that to the religious folk to uh, makes me feel more more in tune with reality, my reality, because things ain't changing to benefit us they never have they're never going to and wow if you can't understand that i don't know how to define it to somebody that wouldn't understand it but start with fluoride mm. yeah, do a little digging on the fluoride thing i i've i've kind of exhausted uh, looking into any more details but what i found at the end that satisfied my curiosity about fluoride what the that particular fluoride that they put in the drinking water that we drink is actually a chemical waste product. There you go. You can look it up yourself. You can ignore me. You can agree with it. You can do whatever you want because I've had people come back with, there's a certain amount of fluoride in nature and da 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 da. Well, that's true. There's a certain amount of cyanide in cherry pits, but you're not going to die swallowing a couple of fucking cherry pits. Speaking of that, Ozark. So in one of the episodes of Ozark, they have this powerful couple that owns lots of land in the Ozarks. They've been there for generations. But they secretly grow a heroin poppy crop and sell heroin from the Ozark Mountains of America. And <laughs> anyway, it, and that's what I mean is... TV is so desperate for an audience now. They've got to create shit that will never happen. 
You know, they're they're trying to make the old families of of Missouri look like they're a bunch of criminals. And if they are or they're not, isn't the point. It's that if the government or the TV or the church or anybody like of, of authority tells you something, you you're bound to follow that that road and to see where it goes. If you're in this society, or, you know, that we all seem to at the RLM anyway, try to keep one foot out of, you know, it's there, it ain't going anywhere, and we deal with it when we have to, but for the most part, willing participation is isolated, you know, I wouldn't consider my wife one of us in that respect, because she enjoys what she does for money, and I know what, oh, that is such a, um, it's such a good spot to be in because not everybody's fortunate enough to do something for money that they enjoy doing. So, um, and again, that's all that uh, planned obsolescence and indoctrination together has brought us to this. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a point of contention where we're at now. And maybe I'm wrong and maybe uh, Vinny is correct. And there are more and more people, you know, taking a serious look at, at the ass whooping we're taking from the very people that we're supposedly putting in control of our well being and what they do with it is disgusting, you know. Let me go back to the I'm ranting and raving all over the place like a mad dork. I'm gonna go back to the chat and say, hmm Grimner is talking to Miss Kate and the end is did Flash ever say what Tuesday's show name is going to be? Yes, Miss Kate, the name of the show is... And there's a, <clears throat> there's also a, a subtitle. I forgot how Vinny worded it, but it's the, the main title is In a Perfect World. Yeah, and I just got in and out of a rant about that because in a perfect world, we wouldn't have the problems we have, but we've all been taught that a perfect world is an illusion even me, I mean, even I've given up on, hey, this, the politicians are going to tell the truth. But even recent history shows you that to make pot legal, they're not going to tell you the truth and say, well, look, we lied about this in the 30s so that you wouldn't be able to use it. But no, they recent uh, studies indicate, look at what we found. And the truth is they didn't find anything. They knew it all along. And they've been lying to us. Well, how can you participate with a, a group of people? Either they willingly know that the government has been lying. The ones representing it today. They either know it's been a lie all along. Or they believe the lie and think pot is bad for us. So, where does the new study come in at all? A stand on pot is usually uh, fueled by your religious indoctrination, your school indoctrination, or your political affiliation. Because people that don't hold one of those three seats in society generally are the ones that I'm smoking with. <laughs> you got to be all out of all three to smoke with me. It's like a like a requirement, like a test, you know? If if you tell me, well, yeah, I, I voted for Trump, no, give me back the pipe, pal, you can get it. You need to go. <laughs> Maybe not that, that abrasive, but I would find a reason to leave that conversation and ditch the weed and go, not stay. People that participate willingly in their own enslavement, they should be dealt with, you know, from a distance. If you don't understand the the results of what you're doing, and you think that any good is ever going to come out of it, explain the last 5,000 years. And I'm stealing that one from Tom because Tom's more of a history guy than me. I don't find it necessary to go back beyond 1971 very often. You know, It's all proven itself to be true anyway. But if you do look seriously and find uh, correct ways to, to get an answer, you'll find that nothing has changed. It's... We live exactly the same way we do now as we always have. They just figured out how to overcrowd us and, and have us accept that as normal. And it's just wrong. The, the, the planned obsolescence and uh, 
you know, the man made shortages. And Johnny Carson <laughs> did that on TV when I was a kid. I still remember. I think it was 1973. There's even a link you can find on YouTube. And he made a joke in his monologue about, well, there's... Well, there's a shortage of toilet paper. <laughs> and the next day, everybody that saw Johnny Carson that night went to the store and bought all the toilet paper they could find, and they created a toilet paper shortage. And what that could have been a plan, for all I know. But it it was it was the first time that I saw the power of of gossip. You know, I was old enough to understand, wait, this guy told a bunch of people something that wasn't true and they all believed it. And then they made it happen because they believed the lie they were told. Wow, that's a pretty clever. I wonder how many people can do that. Well, you know what? It seems to me that everybody with an audience over 150 people does that. That's exactly what they do. They make the future happen the way they're dictating it to happen. And they've got all us little machines out here, little lined up in rows, and I'm on this side, I'm on that side, all asking the superiors, what do I do now, boss? Oh, what do I do now, boss? And all, all that, all the ability to think that we were born, I and mean, we must have all been born with it, the ability to think for yourself at some time in your life. Where did it go? You know, Why is it... Why is it a crime to walk on to drive on the on the wrong side of the of the street? Well, you know, well, because you could run into somebody else. Well, why do you think we need to be told that? I mean, isn't that obvious? Here, I I give you a a reason I bring this one up. I had a friend back in um in California. I was hanging out in the valley, and she had this big van, and we're driving down the road, and she's telling me, you know, and. People kind of play with this line in the road like it's really a wall. And I went, what? Well, I drive down this road every day, and everybody stays on that side of the line, and I stay on this side of the line, except every once in a while you might have somebody, you know, look at their phone or something and weave outside the line and wreck. But these these invisible walls exist for us to, to, to engage in driving. Hmm. Now, although that was a little bit of a stretch, it got me to thinking about invisible walls. I never really could grasp that. You know, I've been a, hmm, until my, I don't know, 30s, I was pretty much roving, roving around for years and years. I'd even staying put in a place for a year, up to three, it was still, um, there was more time spent on the road in that 10 year period, I think, than actually settled down in, in one place. It was probably about 60, 40 from 20 to 30 years old. But what got me to thinking about the invisible prison, I think that came after the internet where I was verbally aware of, I saw it in everybody else, but not necessarily myself because I didn't, I didn't have this document. I didn't have that document. But it did have is the mother of all fucking documents, which was the passport. So I had to think about that. You know, I had to get the other documents to get the mother document. And if I'm against the first three, why did I do it? Well, without it, you, the only way to do what I wanted to do was to be um, to risk my freedom instead of spending a few dollars and a few miserable hours um playing a, a paper game and it even though it's it's real in the travel world and it's real in the financial world some part of my mind just it considers it like a game like a i'm still like a little 10 year old and i'm buying um, park place i got park place Ooh, whoopee doopee but i don't I don't flaunt my passport. I don't carry the damn thing. Uh, I don't physically use it, but I'm very aware of the power that comes from this stupid fucking little piece of paper. And it represents me in society. So in one way, the deceit and the lies of government fuck me. And in another way, I can use the deceit and lies of government to... Uh, make my my life more comfortable with the game that's played in government because I have the wherewithal to fill out the fucking documents and do that bit. But 
taken it seriously to a level where I'm a better man than you are because like uh I hope Rob doesn't get mad at me, but Rob said he couldn't get a passport because of legal problems. And I don't feel better or more uh, successful than Rob. I just think that uh, I got I got through life uh, unscathed by the man, so to speak, in ways that it hit other people, like Vinny. Vinny did something stupid and, and when he was younger, and, and he ended up doing prison time for it. But in the middle, between the crime and the and, and the time, he went out and had a, a little fun at the the expense of, of you know further charges. I guess you would say, but he said he was on the run for a while. But he finally gave up and wanted to get his name cleared up, and, and he did the thing, you know, to please the state. I don't think that he did anything uh, more than that. That's the way I hear Vinny tell me when he's talked about it, because. The people in your life, sometimes it's more important to please them than it is to stand for your, you know, your own independence. Uh, it's one thing. When you're independent and you're alone, well, when you got other people involved in your situation, you're not independent anymore. You got a partnership now. So your freedom is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many people look at it that way. I know Cirque does. We we came to agreement before we um, actually, well, I don't know, how would you call it? We talked our way through um, into understanding we've given up the freedom to do what we're going to do, you know. Otherwise, there's no point to do it. You know, if, if, you're, if you're not serious, just don't, don't bother, I think was the mutual, I mean, in the long run, that would be the easiest way to, to verbally explain it. But the uh, the magnets were working on fucking 10 that day. And, uh, you know, things just, I'm stuck. There's no, there's no explaining how I feel to other people. You either you can see it or you can't. And most of the people that have come over, my brother even said to me, he goes, wow, this, this woman's got you, got a hold on you, huh? And my brother and me are not very uh, talkative and close like girls or any of that. So it was kind of strange for him to even make a comment about, you know, my my present relationship when he'd usually just ignore it. Wouldn't say anything. Didn't have an opinion. Didn't want to know the, the girl I was um, dating with, living with, involved. He didn't have any interest in that. But when he met Cirque, he noticed that there's something different about this. Hmm. And as long as it's a common consensus, I think we were talking about, weren't we having a conversation here about uh, getting reinforced verbally? You know, you get, yeah, Tom Tom and me, he was, he was throwing ideas that he has about America and things that he would expect me to have a, a physical hands-on knowledge about. And that's, that. I guess that's where it, where it comes down to, you know, you are what you what you've done. I mean, shit, I know a lot of people want to play in the NFL and all that, be a movie star nonsense, but, you know, reality dictates that being a good person is a 24-hour-a-day job. It's a lot of fucking work to be nice. I think it's a whole lot easier, like, for me to get on the RLM and, and spar with Hansel about nonsense and give him a bunch of grief and call him names. So I got bored of it finally and, and just blacked him. Done. I, I don't want to do it no more. And I told him, I, you know, as long as it's amusing me, I'm going to I'm gonna take shots at you on the RLM. And, but no, we've, the uh, the joke is dead. I had a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you, Hansel, for playing along all this time. But I've outgrown you now. And uh, now we'll just reminisce about the good old days. Like me and Vinny will make a joke about you here and there. But I'll be damned if I'm ever going to read any of the crap you type anymore. I've had enough of it. It's always too rude, too insulting. And, you know, there, there's no need for it. You, you never bring us a ray of sunshine. You're always raining. And uh, the, the plants need a little sun now. So we need a break. And that's my way of doing it. And well, so I can't disengage unless I disengage. I got you. Got to be out of sight to be out of mind. And even out of sight, I still know he's there. <laughs> my my little Nazi pal, you know, raining on all all the Fox News and all the interesting things that are going on and Magtow and 
tweaker cam and all that robo sex robot crap. Well, it's entertaining, but it, it doesn't solve anything. And what I find that does solve things, well, that's not very popular because the person that has the problem has to do all the work. You know, if me and say, say, I'll even make a third party. If me and uh, Tom have a problem, CERT can't fix that problem. Actually, if me and Tom had a problem and CERC intervened, the only thing that would become a, a would result from her intervention is she'd become part of the problem. So I think that, you know, certain of my peers, my wife being one of them and Tom, we don't get into serious conflict. If if there's a voice raising, it's just because hey, I'm I'm blah, 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 blah. you're talking with passion about your your topic. It's not about anger towards the person you're talking to, and that took a lot of years to uh, actually be in control of my my own output to draw that kind of good input. And I think you get what you put out in in life. So, being as I like I was bitching about hands, I was getting so much hands and it was making getting my attention so much of the negative of it that I had to cut it out like a tumor and just pass it on. So now me and Vinny are going to go on and we're going to do a Tuesday night show for the benefit of our hardcore dorks out there that uh just want to be, you know, kept up on on what the hell's going on in Dorkland, you know? What kind of stupid jokes or stories you got this week? But as far as um, uh, fixing anything, the only thing that I've been able to fix ever in my whole 59 years is me. And I think the problem was convincing me that I was the problem and I needed to, to do the job myself. That that came with a lot of uh, a lot of listening, I think. I listened to a lot of links about things that I had suspicion of, like the medical and the legal, you know, uh, putting my own experience in the past and looking at it, you know, 30, 40 years later and, and comparing it to how people are behaving now. And socially, I think the biggest change that, that has hit us as a collective is since 1970 to, to today, people are whiners. They want to complain about everything. This is wrong. Oh, don't talk to me like that. Don't call me a man. Don't call me a woman. Don't call... What do you call... I identify as a toaster oven. Where's your strudel? <laughs> I don't... I don't understand. It's like... It's like I, I've missed... Uh, 40 years went by. And I see the changes that took place at the end result... But when I was in them, I didn't see it. Didn't even notice it. All these college nerds and running around with their... Uh, I, I, they live in la-la land. They live in the land that I want to live in that I know doesn't exist. They live in a place that they know it doesn't exist either. But they're going to force it to be that way. And that's not how it works. You can't force human beings to do anything. The harder... You, I'll give you the joke. It's a Mexican joke. The similarity between the Mexican and the cue ball. The harder you hit them, the more English you get out of them. But, you know, it's, uh, I think it's universal. If you, if you, tr you can train us to do anything, why not train people to understand, for example, what Larry Woods was talking about. Larry is a brilliant guy. And it, I think his intentions are are true and honest, but to make what he wants to make physically possible takes money, and when you when you add money to the uh, to the equation, in the end you just come out with a shitty end result that makes a few people money. I don't know how to get that point that particular point across to anybody, but it didn't work out too good. Um, it's I don't see it going to like even Goober Goober's uh, he's on a thing he's got some kind of battery that lasts and this and that well people have been doing that for a long time and what happens is the oil companies buy up your patents and crush you and bury it somewhere and make a deal so it can't be produced until 2080 
or you know like the kennedy assassination well we'll tell you what happens in 2018 and then 2018 comes along well george bush is still alive we can't tell you yet give us another 20 years (laughs) and in the meantime it's been exposed, explained, movies, every possible angle of that assassination has been covered to the point of who gives a fuck now. And what it was about was a fractional reserve banking, the Federal Reserve Bank. He was trying to let people know how badly we were being took. And, well, they warned him, but he did not listen. And his little brother didn't listen, but Ted listened. <laughs> Ted's the only one that went out with a, without a bullet in his head. He had a brain tumor. Oh, let's see what they are chatting about. I'm going crazy tonight. But, well, maybe not crazy. Uh, just a little crazy. But, uh, let's see. Let's go on a mission to free our friends of the bondage of Mother State. How would you... How Yep, yep. Sorry, Grim. I I was moving around and I hit my pause button, and uh, I was losing my mind about money. No, no, no. It was me. I'll wait until it catches up on the RLM delay. Told you I'm dangerous alone <laughs> with the radio, <laughs> but I'm doing the best that I can. Yeah, I sure did. That's right, Moose. No. Oh yeah, I got. No, I'm still on the RLM. Uh, I get. I don't know if I'm on or not. I'll keep talking, but Dork's telling me to reboot. I think he's kidding. I just pushed the. Um, I pushed the mute button on this here fancy. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, Dork's telling me. Am I? Am I off? Wait a minute. I'm on. I don't know. I'm flying without a net tonight, so if I, yeah, there she goes, no, yeah, no, yeah, I don't know, I hit a button, I was doing my, I miss Mary on the dark table button pushing thing, <laughs> there you go, hey cakes, didn't mean to panic you, I think I had a stroke on the radio while I was doing it live, <laughs> thank you, Miss Kate, uh, yeah, I, I screwed up. I, I I do that occasionally. Not that button, the other button, I know. And, it, and it's got a big red light, too, that comes on. And I'm so blind that if I don't look right at it, it doesn't get my attention. It's very sad. I know. But uh, here, let's go to my notes and see what I find. I found, oh, yeah, I mentioned this, too, before. So let's pass that one. But I miss my train wreck from Arkansas right about now. But, you know, uh, this is a really uh, personal thing to do the radio without a, without a script and without a plan. Just to get on here and, and just do it and see what comes up. 
And it's that sometimes it's the topics are more interesting than other times. It's uh, it's not easy to be me. But I would rather be me than be you, I think. Uh, here's something. I, I got my notes here. You ready for this? You guys ready for let's chat about Flash's notes. And one note I wrote was, I know the shit that other people don't care about. And I think that's what I was getting at with, you know, I know this stuff about Rockefeller medicine because I lived through it, survived it, got pointed to looking at it, looked at it, and went, holy fuck, that happened to me. Okay, well, if you don't have that luxury, maybe you wouldn't be so willing to see that side of the story and think, oh, we've been had all these years, oh my god. You might think, ah, oh, this is just a documentary so that I'll be against it. You know, we've got a lot of uh, social barriers that have been, like, instilled in us since we are little. And some more subtle than others, but I think the, like, the, uh, uh, my mom and dad were law-abiding citizens by God and country. You know, my parents were the type, they, uh, they did everything by the book, within the rules, the guidelines, and they never bothered anyone, and never hurt anyone, and all that kind of crap. But, the society that I was growing in a, up into is not the one they were raising me for. It was a different world. By the time I was old enough to support myself, all the companies that had been used to, to get you to do that were all folding. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't never have a chance. So you know, I went the military. I've said this before, too. I, I tried to go the military route, and, and they went, Oh, no, you do not want to kill. We don't really want you. We want the guy that wants to murder people and, you know, rape cats and shit like that. And me, I just wanted to use them and go to school and, and maybe get a, a... I was thinking at the time, I was only 16, forgive me. I was thinking law probably would have worked out for me. That seemed to be uh, the skill that I was, you know, given and the path that at the time would probably produce the, the finest results at the end. But something happened on the way to school one day in like 1972 or 3. And I never looked back. I went, no. They, they tried to get me. They've always said that Richard Nixon was born in Yorba Linda, but he wasn't. He was born in Whittier, California. And there's even a the school that he went to. I think it was in Whittier. Anyway, they were trying to get me to, to go to this school. And I was just about to turn 14. And they were setting up all the tests and all this crap. And I had said no. I went, fuck this. And I left home. I was gone about two months before I got caught. And it was the very last time that I'd, I'd taken the uh, run away from home to solve my problems uh, route. But it worked. They they lost interest in me because now by that point on the in California in the records I was a habitual runaway and I'd been arrested for um, pot and all kinds of well no I hadn't been arrested for the pot yet that was coming in the future but it, I think the habitual runaway and you know interacting with the cops at such an early age gave them a reason to just lose interest and go on to somebody that wanted it so I. I thought of it as I beat them, I escaped their trap, but my parents thought I had ruined my future and I would never become a lawyer and you know be a rich guy. What I didn't know at the time is I never had any intention of being that. I didn't. I never wanted that kind of life. I've always been uh, happy with whatever I'm around. If I'm around a, a in a park, I'm happy in a park. If I'm at a hotel with you know tile floor and see i'm happy there too it doesn't ma i adjust me to the surroundings i'm in now the thing that changed here in denmark is the surroundings don't matter i'm comfortable in the society for once in my life and that took a lot of years to find a place that i didn't cringe every time i saw the fucking law or every time i had to go interact with somebody and do commerce i would just oh man i gotta go to the fucking store and do that i you why don't you go here i'll throw you here an extra 10 bucks don't you do it for me and now i'm the one that that goes to the store and i like it so the only thing that i can really attribute this to is something about me changed 
because life is still the same overall. I mean, there's just as many status and voters and flag wavers and football players and all that here as there is anywhere else. It's just the, the, the amount of them is smaller. So it's not like they travel in groups of 50. Sweetie? It, you know, people are... Uh, they're more dependent on the next guy. You know, when when you live in a smaller community, I didn't know this until I started to to look at it, actually. When I grew up, I grew up in a city, and it didn't matter. There were so many people who were just replaceable. You know, if you, if you lost a friend, you could make five more. It didn't matter. Now, out here, if you lose a friend, it's it matters because there, there's nothing to... Um, there's no external shit to be thrown at you so that you get into that mental, oh, I'm right and you're wrong, and da, 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 let's fight, let's go outside. I, I haven't seen that in years, and I don't think it's because of my age. I think it's because of the places where I've ended up living. Well, there was a lot of people punching each other in Scotland, but they, they grew up together. That was their way. You know, they'd go to the bar on the weekend, and two guys would just have, be, have a problem and just two punches and then it was over and everybody go back to normal where i'm from two guys punch each other five other people get into it it's a full-blown ride out in the parking lot and you got paramedics and cops so i i went wow this is good when i saw the two guys fighting in scotland i went wow punch punch that was that and that and they called that a fight it was like <laughs> okay I, I've seen, uh, my father's hit me harder than that, and, and when, then we had a beer. <laughs> whoop, whoop. But uh, that was a joke, uh, an exaggeration. I drank with my dad, but not after he punched me. <laughs> that would have been interesting, though. Nah, it wouldn't. My father had a terrible temper. Oi, that poor guy. He, 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 didn't, uh, he didn't see life so much differently as I do now towards the end of his life. And I was living in North Carolina. This is, I think, the the only reason I really agreed to go to Scotland in the first place was because he'd called me after uh, after I went through all the paperwork and got the paper, the passport renewed and all that. Well, he called me, and, and uh, his tone was different. He was uh, nice. But, you know, after... The lifetime of not nice, my partner at the time was sitting there kind of listening to the conversation, and, and I was being nice, which was so weird for her to see in the first place, because me and my dad, didn't, uh, through all the years that I, I communicated with my mom, my father never wanted to talk to me <laughs> about anything. So when this finally did happen, I thought, wow, he finally he finally gets it, and he did finally get it, but... I didn't get to Scotland until he was dead eight days before I got there. So that that eight days, uh, it didn't really do it. You know, it, it doesn't change anything. He told me what he had to say, but I didn't get to sit in the room. He, when, you know, there's a difference when you, when you hear it on a phone and when you hear it in person. And uh, luckily for me, I'm not that sensitive. I think I was satisfied with, with what I was given by my father. But I sure wish he didn't. You know, we always have regrets about stuff that's just ridiculous. But if he would have been himself in his life instead of the pretend guy to succeed and get through life without all that, you know, without he should have took the trouble on, but he didn't. And in a way, the, that's what the conversation was about, was I was right about my choices that I made for myself. And and he was not pissed off at me about it anymore. So, you know, some people never get to hear these kind of things in the first place. But I would have, I went there to hear it face to face, but I didn't get it. But I did get two and a half years of my mom. So that was kind of cool. You know, when I got there, I didn't know my mom was uh, in a wheelchair either. That was news. My parents were very secretive. So my father was ill, dying ill. And my mom's in a wheelchair. That's the the secret of behind going to visit them. They didn't tell me all the bad stuff. They they kept that private. So when I found out, it was it wasn't like a, I didn't feel cornered. You know, well, who's going to take care of you? I felt, uh oh, here I am. This is why I'm here. And I spent a lot of years avoiding talking about 
even when I was there doing it, telling anybody why I was actually in Scotland in the first place. Because, you know, on the Internet, everybody's a superstar, and, oh, look at me, how wonderful I am. And I didn't want to... Uh, I didn't want to use that part of, of my life as a way to, you know, gain people's appreciation. And, oh, look at what a wonderful guy he is. Because deep down inside, I know, no matter how much you like me, when you hear what I got to say about shit, you might not like me so much. And uh, as time went on, I got isolated. My partner left. Didn't have any intention of coming back. I had no intention of going back to the States. So I had the summer to kill, and eh, drinking got old, the island got old, and uh, I'm, I knew Kelly from the grocery, so anyway, I started, we started chit-chatting, going out and having coffee, she's a good friend, just, just a friend to hang out with, because we were both outsiders on the island, and uh, then I met Cirque. And the rest of it, oh, thank you, sweetie. And the <laughs> two-handed, I'm a two-fisted smoker. You'd be so proud of me out there. But I think that uh, the lessons that I've learned in life were basically more decisions that I've made about the results the way that I interpret them. Because you can be in the same position I'm in and deal with it in many many different ways and I don't know if uh, I don't know how to compare it to any you know people are living their life and they're doing what they're doing it's hard to imagine for me what you're doing because I'm kind of busy with myself I'm very selfish all I can see is what I do I can see the results of what other people do if I pay attention but I usually don't did I hit the button again? Oh, no. Let's see. Let me read the chat. I've been ranting about nothing for a bit. Ah, uh, you are back, Flash Somebody. 19, 29, and 04 seconds from the Moose Girl. Yep, so I made it back to the rec radio. Yeah, oh, Grim. Yeah, I was a bad seed in, in a sense because of that. Uh, my father, in one respect, brought out of that, you know, be your own man thing, but he didn't. Uh, he didn't put a cap on it, and it just got out of hand at a very early age. I took it, I took him very seriously as as soon as I understood, you know, standing your own ground. Couldn't have been seven, eight years old. You know, don't let people push you around, you know, because you're small and they're gonna try to take advantage. Don't let them bully you. And I carried it into, a, but I turned it into a ver a word game, not so much physical as to. To see me physically, nobody's ever intimidated. I'm not a physical threat. But if you have an argument, I've had a few people tell me it's a whole lot better to be for me than it is against me. <laughs> and not because uh, of so much of the, the argument is the fact that I have a knack for being on the side that's good for everybody, not just selfish thing, you know. Because by myself, I learned real young, by myself I can do certain things, but it's a whole lot easier with other people. And, you know, being a, uh, you don't have to join a group to build a, a building, you know. You can just hire on as a laborer. <laughs> but I don't know, I'm not a greedy guy, so I never wanted to do a whole lot. And the things that I have wanted to do, I've I've done most. I can't think of anything. Where would I want to go? I haven't been. Nah, covered all that. And where I am, Pancake says I'm bragging because I'm so happy here with Cirque. So we won't do that, Mr. Cakes. I'll get up. I'll get up around that. Hey, Hannah, saying hi to the scooter. And uh, dorks and the cakes are having fun on the love chat on the R L and M. Oh, she's posting links. Wait a minute. I'm going to try to open this and hope I don't shut it down again. And see what Miss Moose is up to. Ah, the George Carlin. Here's all you have to know about men and women. Women are crazy. Men are stupid. And the main reason women are crazy is that men are stupid. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I th and I think it's uh, like the planned obsolescence. It's the design of the game that we're in, you know. You know, have you noticed how many women empowering films they got on this fucking Netflix? 
This Netflix thing is dangerous if you don't know what you're looking at, I think. And, uh, and not because I take such a stand about, well, men are different than women. And da, da, da. Well, they are. You know, and it's not because men aren't aren't equal. Men and women are very equal. But just there's things that, as people, doesn't even matter what gender you are. Even if if, uh, if you have a rowing team, you got one guy that does one thing, and if you got girls on the team, then you got a girl that does this and a guy that does that, and everybody does something different to make the thing work. You know, it's called cooperation. I think <laughs> I, I read about it in a pamphlet when I was trying to get into the military cooperation. That's what we do. And we save people and free them. The military. Yum, yum. I have no idea what I said that made moose girl laugh, but I'm glad she laughed. Ha 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 ha. Now me, I'm on serious mode. Hey, do you guys know that vitamin uh, B12 has been, designated a cure for cancer actually well i've seen links about it so the the truth about it is going to be a matter of how you interpret the information that you receive to to learn the idea and here's the facts the facts are the plant the apricot seed that they're claiming the b12 comes from the seed of is illegal to grow in the united states huh did they not play this game with hemp and cannabis once upon a time? I think they did. So it makes it easier for me to believe that if the United States federal government is going to go out their way to make another prohibition and illegalize another plant, that plant must be good for me. So now the government's got me trained to think that if they're for it, it's bad for me. <laughs> So it doesn't matter. What, see, this is why I, I don't want to vote. You know, it don't matter what side of the coin you're on. At the end, you're going to come out unhappy with the result. So why participate in it? You know, maybe if, if enough of us stepped away, maybe there'd be people that would go, hey, this thing doesn't work, does it? What can we do? <clears throat> so like Fresco, why don't you take a piece of paper and write down all the things that work and use those. Why do you have to have a, a political stand and all this? It's all commerce and bullshit, the crap that we actually get told. Nobody ever comes forward and says, you know what, Congress? The hemp plant takes four months from seed to harvest. It produces this much this, this much that, and we can make this, that, and the other out of it. No, what these fuckers do is they go, well, how can we write this law slap some mercury on these poor mofos and get them to buy it from us at a premium price because, well, if they don't get inoculated, they could get sick. Well, uh, here we go. And it's things like that. You know, don't, doesn't the guy that get in, gets the inoculation understand that what he's being inoculated with is the illness so that his body will produce a resistance to it <laughs> so you're you're getting sick you're paying people to put sh and then they add stuff to it read the ingredients they're incredible mary did that once and i went i don't even know what half the stuff that they tell you is in it let alone do i have the ability or the interest or time to go look up every fucking ingredient and then the weight of that ingredient in a you know in a syringe that they're going to put whatever 10 milligrams or something of something in you and then break all that down in all its little components well, what they don't tell you is that some of that shit doesn't work for time <laughs> years go by and as those years go by whatever you got inoculated was working on your last nerve over a period of time and then boom you break down then you need to go back to the people that gave you the fucking shot to fix that <laughs> You wouldn't have got there if you didn't get the shot. And if you'd have got the disease, instead, your body has an immune system. And if you didn't abuse the immune system with all this crap from the grocery store, it would work and you wouldn't be able to be conned into believing you need to be gotten sick to build a, 
uh, an immunity to the disease that you might never have even gotten. <laughs> wow, what is it? Three card money on steroids, you know, bait and switch. They ah, they bury us in all the details. Let's see if we got. Hey, Woody showed up. We've got barbecue. Clean that fucker up. Last person on this property left it. Hey, they're lost. You're gained. Pretty much brand new Weber. No tank, of course. Oh, well, you give, you, you're going to have to get a tank. <laughs> Woody is our, uh, he's the one that left Seattle to go live in a non-disclosed place somewhere around Tucson, Arizona, and be a desert dweller. Yeah, I think Woody's happy with his choices. He seems all right with it. I've been keeping up on his chitter-chatter. He's been working. And the add-on going to the uh, real estate school, that that's brilliant. If you know, if it works out to be something that you, you're interested in. Because I had I don't know if I've told you this or not, but I had a friend, blah blah blah. Uh she my, my relationship at the time's daughter wanted to get into real estate and got the books and all the interested and da 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 and then took a look at it and realized it was too much for her. It wasn't what she thought it would be. But my friend, the bartender, said, hey, what's she going to do with the books? <laughs> so I connected the two of them. And today, the bartender is now a real estate broker. But you don't know. You never know until you try something if it's going to interest you or work out. And I saw Woody going through the uh, the process of what were you getting your fingerprints or something, some kind of licensing part of the program so that you could Buy and sell real estate at the state level. I don't know. All that gobbledygook the state gives you. And finally, oddly enough, Cirque told me when, when we came out to look for a house, the, the housing here is done differently than it's done where I'm from. There's a, a different way to, to go through the banking to get a, to purchase a property. and But the details are all the same. We'll never own the property. We we rent this from the, you know, we rent it from a bank of some kind or another. But the uh, the intrusion and the hurry to, to get us behind on the mortgage so they can evict us and throw us in the street doesn't exist here. There's, um, I think there's more, there's more concern in Denmark to keep you where you're at and help you progress there in, than there is to either hold you back or knock you down. And, that's, of course, the product of overcrowding. You know, there's so many people in the, the big city, even in Copenhagen. I thought it it was a small version of Los Angeles, California in the works. So, but it's uh, it's not going to grow. It's it, they're, they're, uh, The Danes are not welcoming the uh, refugees that the free world made in the Africa. They don't... Uh, they're a population of six million, so they're going to be more honest and, and upfront about, well, we don't want these changes to our culture. And they're going to get their way because they have a culture to protect, like the Polacks. The Polacks in Poland put their foot down and said, nigger no more, we ain't going to have it. And, uh, or was it Hungary? Maybe I've got the, con the countries confused. I do that on the show all the time. My... My names and dates get fucked up here and there. But it, I know I read Hungary today. And I know I've read about Poland stand, putting a stand to it. But the very people that are responsible are really the ones that do the most sniveling about the invasion from you know these bombed out countries that have left a wake of angry fucking civilians that want revenge there's your terrorists boy because they're acting against a government but it strikes me as odd that the very government that made them homeless is the ones that want to move them to a new home where they can cause all these problems because that's not their home how would any of us feel if somebody invaded the the land we live on and bombed it made it in unlivable and then insisted to to move us to a, a new place, and the place that we go to is the very place that was involved in destroying the place that I lived in. <laughs> and all I ever see on the links is 
fuck the Muslims, fuck the this, fuck the that, but never stop the bombing. <laughs> the obvious answer is is stop doing the global commerce. It's it's a failed experiment. It didn't work, you know. But now nah, they've got derivatives markets. Well, I know they're like a hundred trillion dollars in debt on that. <laughs> <laughs> they got the the Rothschilds want their cut from the uh, from the Federal Reserve banks, all their central banks, and the the global debt to them is like forty trillion dollars. <laughs> so so the rest of us have have got to accept that this little group of three hundred families owns every fucking thing else, and you just can't get enough people together to say. Well, that does sound kind of strange, doesn't it? What's wrong with that picture? We live in the land of the free and the home of the brave, by God and country. And then, you, then you ask them about the, you know, the uh, illegal alien surprise checkpoints on the freeway. <laughs> Necessary evil to fight terrorism. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, when we were growing up, we had a way to fight terrorism. It was called a baseball bat. I was born in a in Linwood, California, in 1959. And if you looked up Linwood, California today, it is a predominantly black town. At the time I was born, when I was born there, the year I was born there, there were paper uh, things in the newspaper about the locals in Linwood chasing the blacks out with baseball bats on bicycles. <laughs> It was not, it was, it was a predominantly white, white place. So what changed? Huh? 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 Got it? Huh? 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 Eh? 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 Government changed. The government changes everything. It does what it wants. It tells you, oh, we are going to make your life so wonderful. Oh, if you just vote for me, oh, you will get your way. You will have your property rights. You'll get 20% off your, you'll get a tax cut, and you'll get a this cut, and you'll get a that cut. And then when, when you uh, vote for them, and then they take power, you might get 10% of what they said they were going to give you. You ain't going to get all of it. But the the guy that got the seat, you know what he gets? everything he promised you and then some because to get his seat he has to go to the jews and say oh mr jews please let me run give me the money so i can run for the seat so i can be your dog and do your bidding and without doing that you ain't getting in politics in america maybe on a local level but you'll never see a career mary learned that now, I don't know if Mary is a firm, staunch supporter of Israel one way or the other. I would assume by knowing her over the years. I don't know if we've debated that one or not. I would assume she's not. But because Mary's been involved in government at a personal level, holding a fucking seat, and understands the way this game is operated. And she even was willing to try one more time to go out there and... and see if you know the second time around maybe she could do a little you know uh help do something for the good of the people but she was confronted with somebody that was willing to pay for the seat you know advertising and oh i'll do this for you and i'll do that for you vote for me that kind of bullshit and mary knew better and she went i'm not doing it let him win well in one hand she's right and on another hand, depending on the person listening, she's not right. But what what I appreciated was Mary had the balls to go out there and go as far as she did with it and then make up her own fucking mind. No, I'm not going to pursue it any further. That's, that's cool. That shows me that she was willing to be, uh, be in a seat of, of, of power and decision, but if it didn't happen, it, it wasn't a, uh, the end of her life. You know, it wasn't like, oh, if I can't do that, I'm worthless. And no, let some other guy sit in that and find out what it's all about, and see what what the truth is like. It's it's not what we are told. That's why I harp so much, Miss uh, Chloe, on the voter, because I have known many people over my lifetime that have told me, you know, the outside of the box is real pretty, but boy, what's inside stinks like shit. Now, you got two choices. You can take their word for it, or you can pursue and see if they were telling you the truth. 
how can we all seem to be pursuing the same fucking truth and all end up with 50 different answers? We're all looking at the same damn thing. Well, indoctrination. You know, I know that's your favorite dork word. Dork word of the week, indoctrination. Let us define the word. We will go. No, that's Vinny that does that. Vinny goes, and now he's on a kick. He goes on, defines every damn word he's not sure of. <laughs> hey, he makes me laugh. Hey, hello. My dog came up to say hi. I'm just going to take a hand break and pet my doggy. Well, you got something in your beard. Okay. Anyway, I'm stalling for a new thought to come. Take control of my mind. Don't smoke. Eh? Yeah, why sock? I smoke all the time. I smoke of the cigarettes. I smoke of the hashish. I'd smoke dog hair if it would get me stoned. <laughs> it, don't, it don't matter, you know. As long as it works and it's not hurting me too awful bad, I'll do it. And they go, oh, but smoking makes your lungs black. And I think, well, nothing that a little swimming. You know, if I started to feel any kind of uh, ailments coming on from my smoking, there's a swimming pool down the road. And I could just go down to the swimming pool a couple times a week and get some exercise and keep whatever ailment I have under control. Because unlike other people, I ain't living forever. Huh, baby? My dog's got her face on the table. She's begging me for something. I ha oh, she's shaking my hand with her paw. She's a good girl. How's that, Chloe? I know you like dogs. <laughs> and my dog's all loving on me right now through the dork table, and she never does this. But let's see where the conversation is going to take me from the RLM. But, yeah, I smoke. I already said that part. Oh, I'm going to read what, what he says. I had some worthless politician, GOP, ask me why I wasn't campaigning for him. Called me at my house. Wow. Did, well, you must have signed up on a list so they could find you, right? Or was that... Mm. No, he goes on. Said I remember a conversation we had as soon as I graduated from college. When you came to my door, I said, you are worthless. Don't call me anymore. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I, I did a show with Woody, too. I mean, Woody uh, bailed me out of a solo Tuesday night, one night when uh, Vince could, Vince had some computer problems. He couldn't get online. He was trying, and, and uh, Woody came on. He even took a shot at his own show. Thought it was very entertaining, by the way, Woodman. But like yourself, this is not the easiest thing to do alone. I don't know why it's so different with somebody else, but... Alone, it's a, it's a new, uh, it's like a new place. It's like, like I always say, I'm talking to myself, but there's a few people listening, but they can't say anything. So, and because of the delay on the um, chat, I'm always, I'm always off. It's the funniest damn thing. Oh yeah, I'm a solo. I'm a solo, so solo. I gotta make up voices just to think I'm not alone. Ah, oh, go, 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 go. Hmm. Yeah, Woody, if. If uh, doggy dog ball shit got me stoned, I'd probably smoke it and see if it worked. But, you know, as a joke, because I saw up in smoke. Remember he had that bag of Labradoodle, <laughs> Let, what, Labrador, because his dog ate his stash and he had to follow him around for three days to get it back. <laughs> doing this wackadoodle shit and tonight i don't know my mind will not uh focus on one particular thing i'm just bouncing around from idea to idea so i did think of changing my uh online identity and give myself an extra name you know like they hyphenate the, when they get married i wanted to go flash somebody harder <laughs> you know <laughs> because rob works and his vote harder Rob Works comes up with some really good catchphrases. I like, and they all suck. That's that's the best one. And followed by vote harder. Boy, I'll tell you, like, I don't know. I do not get it. For 50 years, uh, people have been telling me, oh, look at all the changes. And for 50 years, I've just been seeing all the chains tighten around the throats of the people that I care for the most. <laughs> 
<laughs> and a few people I don't even like. I see the chains t tighten around their throats. I just don't care because I don't like them. Eh, so what? Eh. No, I'm kidding. I'm meeting nah, It's been a terrible joke. Oh, but you know what my wife did? My wife called my bluff on the alkaline water theory I have. And uh, she ordered some, um, they're, I guess they're, they're canisters, you know, small, like a small thermos. And they got a filter in it to do the alkaline water dance to get the impurities out and then, you know, so that I can drink a glass of fucking water and actually not have chemicals in it because th that's what they do. They do it here too. Or the water here has got clay in it, got an excessive amount. It's not like I'm, I feel like I'm being damaged or anything. Uh, I just, I'm looking for an answer to an old question. I've never been real good at uh, holding a bottle of water and carrying a bottle of water everywhere you go. And I'm an under eater. So I, I as well as under eating, I under, uh, what do you call that? Hydrate. No, nah, I don't drink enough fluid. So I thought if I went out of my way to make a big deal out of it, it would get my attention enough so that when I get up in the morning, which is what I should do because it's good for your health, is to have a glass of water. And when I read the links about the alkaline water, it was so impressive to see. Well, it does this and it does that. It was a great sales pitch. And as we all know, the easiest fucker in the room to sell to is the Jew salesman. He's a knock. You never miss with that bastard. But he won't pay retail. But he'll buy anything you got as long as you, you know, you you let him chew you down at the end. You know, pick up the freight for me here, Johnny. You're breaking my balls. You're breaking my balls. You know, that kind of thing. The sales stuff. I don't know. When is the Woody show starting? I sure like to see that. Or see that. <laughs> Sorry, Woody. Hear that. He's, uh, he's got a good approach on the radio i was impressed because for me this is very difficult i i don't find it easy to sit down and and just communicate my inner being with uh, a crowd at the rlm but i i give it a shot i did this because grim said he goes well nobody's there's nothing going on during the week and i personally understand the the public's not desperate enough to make uh, a, a site like Real Liberty Media uh, important yet, that they're still they're still in in the they're still in the machine. They're not done yet, but when they are ready, your <laughs> your server better be ready because you're going to get traffic. Uh, and speaking of that, you got another site going on, the Old World Truth and brought back uh, Real Liberty dot org. And he's the guy that was originally working with Mary. And then he left. And then Mary and Cirque were together. And then they decided it was uh, better left uh, un undone. And they undid it. And now they've used... It's, I think it's just basically the maybe the licensing or some, some technical detail. But they brought it back. But now it's called realliberty.org. And it's got a little bit of a lag thing going on uh i can see why people are going to be a little slow right now um yeah running my mouth comes easy too but i was i was given grim little input live on the dork table telling him what i thought about the the new program i like the format i like the style i like the input blah 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 but there's some kind of a lag to the page it runs real slow so i don't no, if it's my equipment, I'm just telling you so you'll know, hey, I'm getting a bad result because my shit's not working good. But if it's your equipment, uh, you need to know what kind of results you're getting out of your, uh, you know, the people using the stuff, I think. So if I sound like I'm being criticizing, I'm fucking being criticizing. <laughs> you're a big boy. You can take it. I think I don't think Grim has to be handled like a little, you know, like a little China doll. Your your sight, sir. Can you can you do some? No, hey Grim, I got a leg. Get over here, fix it. Help, help, help. <laughs> I don't know. I tried to make a joke out of it, and it kind of fell apart. Let's see what other tidbits have I got on my. Hey, let's talk about belief. 
do you be Mary was just loving when she found out the definition of the word believe from the, the origins of the word definition, not the Webster's Dictionary de- definition that we use as a matter of daily common use. When you go digging out the, the, the facts behind the facts and find out what we're doing and how we're doing it and how wrong it is, and there's no stopping it because we've been doing this all our life up to this point. So it's not like, oh, well, we'll fix it. But being aware of it is, I think that in itself has got a lot of power. Because we have bastardized the English language to the point of, what the fuck did that man just say? <laughs> Let's see, what else, what else have I cut? Hey. We've got belief. We've got a jury of our peers. Have you ever heard anything so ridiculous in your fucking life? Twelve random people, because they got a fucking driver's license, are going to gather in a room and listen to a bunch of shit about you and judge your future in the world based on the stories they're told. But <laughs> it's, it's an impartial jury. They don't know if you're guilty or not. <laughs> Why, they'll decide that later. <laughs> I mean, it it works on paper. You know, there's a lot of things in, in our political life that when I look at them, I see how, wow, the brilliant, that fucking, that's a great idea. But then when you try to physically enforce it, you find out, boy, this thing was, a, it was not, never meant to work. It was meant to do exactly what it does but the people that started it lied to us. And here we are, t- 2018, and the very same people they've been lied to about the government their entire fucking life, and since the government ever even began, are still arguing about the merits of a Supreme Court fucking justice. I mean, ha- <sighs> there seems to be a lack of reason amongst the, the adult population of the world today. That if you can't learn from 1913 proves that the Federal Reserve Bank was a scam, that the way they did it was illegal, everything since then has just been garbage, why are you concerned about who they put on the Supreme Court? They could put Mickey Mouse in the Supreme Court and you're still going to get the same crap you get because the people that own the Supreme Court, they call them... Don't tell anybody I said this. Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, Coca-Cola. Ringing a bell here, people? You know, anything that you fucking have to have, they own the people that you vote to make your decisions so that you have the illusion of you're deciding when you got nothing to say about nothing and the truth comes out when you drink the fucking water and find out it's got poison in it. Poison or sludge from some chemical plant dumping it openly into the fucking water. Thank you, honey. I just received the elixir for part two of dorks in space and other places but yeah i was getting kind of hot about that one but fuck's sake i mean i would just assume as as full-grown adults a human being in the 2018 could look at the fucking results of chemotherapy on a personal level one-on-one and know deep down inside that is not right they you can't no stop this this does not work but they don't. And it's a printed 97% failure. Nine, not not no, 12% or 8%. 97% of those people, they all suffer, but 3% of them might live five years, and they call that a success. Now, if you go the other way, and you go the natural remedy road, what you'll find is people's lives were saved naturally for no money because natural remedy is the cost of a fucking uh, powder you know i'm not talking your cocaine i'm talking about like baking soda (laughs) baking soda is (laughs) cheap oh here's that this i had a brain fart about this movie but uh they have this program called ozark and 
I was getting onto it earlier because uh, they have a, a two of the characters are old married couple lived in the Ozarks generations and generations. They own the property. They've got a secret heroin poppy growing plants thing going on, but in the end of the thing, they're gonna actually one of them is gonna kill the other one, and it, it's set up so you see the the husband putting the knife in the pocket and they're going to go have their morning coffee walk and they're going to take the long way. And you expect to see the husband, you know, out there in the wilderness murder his wife. <clears throat> well, as he's drinking his last sip of his coffee, he falls on his back because she ground up cherry pits and poisoned him with the cyanide in the cherry pits. So, I don't think that people really understand how many cherry pits you'd have to grind up to make enough poison to do what, you know, the amount of it, because it's a natural form of of the poison. So it's it's toxic, and it's available, and you could do it, but you're not going to do it the way they portrayed it in the film to poison his coffee and that more. You know, they made it look like, oh, I just ground up a couple of cherries and made some thing, put it in your coffee, and now you're dying. Bye, honey. <laughs> Things are so exaggerated and, and done in such a fast speed time that people don't take time to think about the process, that what it takes to, to pull off the crap that gets done. Like 9-11, that took years of planning and fucking manipulation that we're not taught exists. We don't understand that. But if you were in the military, you'd, you'd get it because the layers and layers and layers of military you, you know is privates don't talk to generals for a reason <laughs> but that's how life runs that's how businesses are run that's how governments are run one layer to the next layer to the next layer or circle of physically like you'll never get near trump unless they want to let you near trump because you've got to get into the circles of of uh, of protection that he has protecting him and it, it's there's no other way to stay alive in the world no more at that level of money. <laughs> it's kind of fun to watch. I mean, I I giggle a lot about it because, uh, well, for one, uh, I'm not in it anymore. Jeez, I haven't been to a city in four years, and with any luck, I won't break down and give in to the temptation to go to the city. Because every now and again, and again. I get a mood where, you know, I want to go down to Freetown with Circle and maybe go have a smoke and a couple of glasses of beer and watch some band play some music, but we have a dog. <laughs> and I got the dog as a companion from the beginning, so I, I, never, uh, I never planned to, to leave the dog alone. And I've never made an attempt to find anybody else to watch the dog in my absence because that's my dog. <laughs> So it's kind of a weird, uh, like a, an excuse, like having a kid, you know, I've got my little kid and my kid needs me. So I, I can't go off and, and destroy my future anymore. <laughs> I have to stay home and be a grown up. Somebody's got to do it. And really, let's see what he's saying. Ah, uh, the, the wood man is saying running my mouth comes easy. Most people try to be rude and shut me up. With radio, I can say whatever the fuck I want. Fuck them. Yeah, and you know, the damnedest thing about Woody is he's a very nice guy. I mean, if if you only know him through the chat, you might think he's got an edge and all that. And he probably has an edge, but uh, I've listened to him on the radio. I spent uh, a little time talking to him on the radio, and I came to the decision that, <laughs> you're a funny fucker. <laughs> And you know a lot of shit, and it will make you unpopular with uh, the living surrounding people. You know, they're not ready for us. They're not desperate yet. Mm. I don't understand that either, because I look at the the degradation of the society and see people living in tents. You know, on the street. W wait a minute. I, I mean, when I was a child, that you didn't see that. You saw pictures of that from the 1920s after the depre or the 30s after the depression, not not in the the new millennium when we have sex robots. 
<laughs> you got you got some billionaire con man trying to sell tickets to the fucking moon. They never went to the fucking moon. They've never been to the moon. NASA's admitted they've never been to the moon. Actually, NASA admitted they've never been out of a certain layer of what surrounds the planet, so they say. Because there you go. Here we go back to the round planet. Whatever's out there, They've never conquered it. They pr- they've told us they've conquered it. And there's enough movies and TV programs on there to both prove and disprove that it's been done. You take somebody that uh, that's familiar with sci-fi and they know all about spaceships and beaming up and you know food s- simulators and, and the Borg, <laughs> Romulans. <laughs> They, they they overlook the control of these TV shows. You know, they've got people convinced now already that in the year 2400 we'll be galactic, but we'll still be fighting for resources. <laughs> but but the men of Earth they've all surpassed greed and and wealth and hoarding, and now they're exploring out in the out in the galaxies, right? But they're still hoarding because they're always looking for more fuel to serve their fucking uh, machine they're flying around in. So nothing changes. But it's the illusion. The illusion of change is so easily sold to people if they don't know what change is. <laughs> change in your diaper. Because <laughs> I, I have met people that never been out of the city that they lived in. And I was shocked. I thought, wow, you never been out out of Baltimore in your life. Nope. This is this is home. This is where I live. This is it. Never been to Philadelphia. What? Nothing. Zero. And I thought I thought that was really <laughs> I thought that was really strange. Tom's got uh got Zappa on his mind tonight. I think after the show I'll play uh I'll I'll play uh com- uh strictly commercial Zappa. That's a nice little piece of music. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Woody's got a little chat going on. Going. Let's see. Oh, and Dork Cakes. Yeah. Oh, there was a buying a modem thing. <laughs> Must be. Oh, uh, I was right. Hey, I even thought that about somebody buying a modem and they said, uh, I don't buy modems, and that was the end of the conversation. And now we're we're reading somebody's buying a modem. <laughs> Coincidence? Maybe I dreamed it, and I never even read it on the internet until right now. Who is to know? Let's see. Let me see if my I've done add-on crimes before. Hmm. Well, how about this? This thought crossed my mind. I wrote this down for some reason. If the results go your way, you know, that's one thing. But when the results don't go your way, uh, here, sir, when they don't go your way, then what do you do? How do you react to it? Uh, things not going your way. So I don't try to, I try to avoid getting sucked into the pretend garbage they, they tell you that matters in the first place. You know, when there's a, a, a ballot on the, from the government to, take the pot off the schedule one but they didn't tell me where they put it and if anybody's been up on the taking uh, cannabis off the schedule one and do they do you know how to explain if they take it off the schedule is it uh, completely erased no it's there's they're not telling me well what is it now i think they're just going to minimize the and still consider it a crime and that in itself is a crime. So where's you know where's the people that are gonna come forward and and people in positions of change you know that can do something about it and actually say out loud we need to stop the prohibition. Well, they can't get past the greed of the dollar. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna let Monsanto. Well, Bear now Bear's gonna have a patent on the CBD oil. I think they already got it. They got the patent so that they can charge $32,000 a year for CBD oil treatment because these people are so greedy and, you know, they're going to lose their customers. So they want to make sure they get something for all their trouble because now they're going to cure you. 
And when the, when this does finally come out and people are, are cured and the media carries the story and the morons start to catch it, things will have to change. But the problem is, is the bear people have manipulated the formula because they patented it. And they, they must, they've, they've synthesized the nature. So they're going to get the result, but it's not going to be the same result you would get from a, can, a, a, an un tampered with source of cannabis is going to bring you different results than the bare source of cannabis. That's what I think, but I can't prove it because I'm not going to go sign up on a CBD oil chemical thing and get use it. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain it. But if I got cancer, I wouldn't I wouldn't use the system to, to fight it. And I think 90% of it is uh, what you eat in the first place, and I don't know, if I, 59 years, if I ain't got it by now, I'm probably not gonna, and if I do, I think I'm the, I'd worry about it when it happened, but see, what we're, this is where I'm really against the medical people, because how they got me with the high blood pressure, how, how, what stops them from, I go to see a doctor, and I have a symptom of something that that doctor's selling a drug for. So, well, his job is to give me that drug for that symptom and then just figure out what disease matches it. Well, what if I'm just having that symptom for that day? How do I know it's not a temporary thing? Or, you know, maybe they read the chart wrong. I don't trust the system enough to put my hands in, you know, put my life in their hands and anymore and let them tell me what I need to do. Outside of uh, being hit by a car, you know, trauma, something like that. But the rest of it, nah. I think it's all man-made. I'm convinced that 90% of my illness is in my head. And the other 10% is just knowing which herb to use to control whatever the hell I, my mind let attack me. Because I got into reading a little bit about the... Uh, the, the makeup of a cell over the summertime, I was reading a little bit about it, kind of interested me. And it says that every individual cell, this is uh, from the scientific people. So, you know, take it or leave it, but it's a good story. And they said that every individual cell has some form of thinking process of its own on an individual level. And they gather amongst, you know, they gather amongst their own. They they identify each other. It's amazing what, when you take life apart with a microscope, what you can find. And then how easy it is to poison the water we drink with the same, but with the lack of information. Just lie about the details to the public and they won't know any better. I mean, they're putting fucking fluoride still to this day in toothpaste, in mouthwash. The easiest part of your body to ingest outside of a uh, a syringe is under your tongue. That's you know, or in your mouth, pretty much. But under your tongue's more sensitive. They'll, when you take certain pills, they'll even insist on it at the hospital. If you put it under your tongue, da, 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 certain or certain applications may not, maybe not a tablet, but it's not like I'm making this particular part up. <laughs> it's just not. It's not a well-spoken topic, but something I feel I'm familiar with from experience. And Well, if they have a cure, I don't get it. I don't see why, Bear, see, Bear buys Monsanto, the Empire Strikes Back. That was from Woody. And, yeah, they're, they're not the kind of people to come up with a cure. They've had a hundred years to come up with a cure, and they didn't do it. All they've come up with is more illness, more diseases, more problems, more shoot this, more take that. And it's only started in what 1850. I was listening to, uh, uh, man, me and my names. So I have such. Who was the guy I was listening to before the Dork Table Cirque? Clint Richardson. Boy, man, because he went off the air. Yeah. Yeah, but I was listening to Clint, uh, one of his rerun shows, and some of the stuff the man says, it's it seems to come so uh, harshly out of out of nowhere. 
But he's obviously put a lot of thought into his delivery of his knowledge. Me, I, I just say what I think at the moment, and if I change my mind, I go, hey, I, I thought that then, now I'm wrong. Or I'll miss, I'll miss, uh, misconnect a name especially with music and shit like that all that celebrity stuff to me it's it's fun and all that but i mean how seriously do i want to take that i i don't i don't think uh i don't think jim morrison and john lennon are going to show up my door tomorrow looking for a score you know what i mean the so the celebrity thing that that doesn't do it but i do like a good story uh, let's go with the chat. I'm losing my train of thought. Hey, I want to, this is Woodman. I want to create a suggestion box. Let me know if you would want to develop a suggestion box. Something where ideas go inbound. Voted on, liked, disliked, something to quantify the results, etc. Spit out results. Yeah, that's interesting. But mob rule, is it a mob rule thing? Or are you looking at uh, people's input on specific ideas, not ways to to uh, get into your wallet for fines? And, you know, oh, you broke the law. Look at you. You rode around your car without a safety belt. You threat to humanity. You, $180, you know, 108 well, I don't even know what it is, but. At the value of the dollar right now, I would expect it to be a three-digit figure because the dollar doesn't buy you nothing. No, well, not any any dollar doesn't buy you nothing anymore anyway. And oh, I don't know. How are they going to prop this crap up again? Let's see. They pulled it off in 2008. That was smooth. My boy, my thumbs up to the bankers. Those fuckers have the balls of the lion. When those bastards should have been took out and publicly strung up, executed, the public gave them a trillion dollars. <laughs> a trillion, a trillion dollars! <laughs> there's, there's no such thing as a trillion dollars, but you know who's got it? <laughs> the government. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, Woody's even asking about maybe... Perhaps you have an idea on how to create a bot for quantifying results. See, because Woody's a thinker. Yeah, he's, he's mentioned that. He's said that about himself. And yeah, he is a thinker. And people like that are necessary for uh, a society to function. And the only element that society lacks is honesty in the, the people that are actually participating in the, the decision making. They get... There's two ways to look at it. One, they're greedy fucking slobs from the minute they decide to go into politics. Or, they're not. And when they get into politics, something changes. Maybe they get... I heard a version of this. Maybe they get a threat from, you know, people in black hats. And tell them, you do it this way... Or we're going to go over and visit your child at four in the morning with a chainsaw. And as we all know, if you threaten people, most of the people that you threaten aren't going to fight back. That's, we've been pussified down to. Oh, they're going to hurt me. I better do what I'm told. And then there's a few diehards like Woody. I would suspect maybe Grimner, Rob Woods, uh, Moose Girl. <laughs> Dork cakes, you know, people that would stand their ground and, and not so easily be rolled over. Or would think things through before they act so they didn't do anything impulsive. But, you know, we're, we're not so easily fooled as others. So I looked at that option and thought, wow, it seems possible. Not like I'm. I'm pursuing uh, making this my answer to that. I'm just saying it seems possible to me. So if I think it's possible, that tells me right right there, there's other people that think it's possible as well. But there's a mindset that go and goes along with even considering that as an option. You can't be supporting the machine and criticizing the machine at the same time. They made it clear with Bush. Well, you're for us or you're against us. And, wow, being against him is a pain in the balls. 
really doesn't go anywhere because America, beyond being a country, is like Europe or Africa or Australia. It, in the mind of the individual, it's an icon. It's a dream come true. It's that faraway place where all the answers grow on trees and all you got to do is just reach up and just take one. And then you find out about reality and reality says, well, they didn't really lie. It's just the, the truth. Well, no, they, they're not going to give it to you. But they're not lying because all these things they do are ethical and they're immoral, but they're within the confines of the law. And for some reason, to a certain mind, that makes it okay. Ah, those people, they're wearing on my last nerve, I'm about ready to go and declare war against the United States and then surrender and file for the foreign aid and build myself a castle on an island and call it Flashgo. But I haven't got that desperate yet. But it's always an option. Going to war against the United States. Hmm. I wonder how many people have won that one so far. <laughs> I think the states just goes and invades other countries. I don't. I don't remember a time in history that could be proven where uh, America was actually physically violated without its own consent. And if you go Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor was not America when it was attacked in, in uh, during World War II. Not only that, but everybody that would participate in it knew what they were doing. It was a game. It was a plan to get the United States. The people of the United States did not want to go to war, but the politicians did. So there we, <laughs> there we go. So these people are so ruthless and so vicious, they'll, they'll destroy their own people to get you to support attacking other people and then grimner or as r a t m said flash despite all my rage i'm still just a rat in a cage as we all are and that's why i say man, me and cirque just made our little prison comfortable and you know and uh homey you know and we enjoy what we got She's she loves to sit out. She's got this great big fucking backyard. I mean, for her and me, you know, just me and her all alone. And uh, she was out there knitting every day. The sun was out when she didn't work. She was out in the backyard and, you know, listening to her little phone, doing her, its thing and making stuff and very happy. So mm, doesn't take much to please some people. They just need a. a a comfortable setting, I think. And the competition with the schooling and the jobs and work and slavery and all this crap, it g makes people believe that things are out of their reach. And the truth of it is they've been deprived of the things that allow you to succeed in society, like work. You know I mean, crying out loud, what was his name? Romney. Ran for fucking president. The guy was a corporate raider. He outsourced more work than he ever created, and he and the he ran for president of the United States, just like Trump. Trump is the biggest piece of shit that ever wore a suit. I mean, he the the piece of shit came in saying, "Grab them by the pussy. They love it. That's the way you treat women. They like that." Well, from uh, I've heard women that love power say yeah, i'd blow him i don't care because that that mentality attracts that sick mentality that's attracted to power <laughs> and i've grown over the years to think that if you're attracted to somebody because they're powerful or they have money there's something wrong with you not them they're doing their job they're they're acting out their part but you're fueling that stupid shit because you you look up to it in awe and wonder. Oh, one day I will win the lottery and have $12 billion too. Well, yeah, that's what's going <laughs> to That's what's going to happen. I don't know. I think not. But did Graham Z get run over by a go-kart? I'm starting a rumor on the RLM. Yep, I think she got run over by a go-kart. 
No, I'm, I'm joking. I was making a bad joke. I need to learn to type. If I could type, I would be so cool. You know that? If I could only type. And there's programs on the internet, and they, you know what you can learn how to do if you follow them? Learn how to type. And you know what I don't do? <laughs> Take a little time to sit down here with a stupid keyboard and put that fucking link on and learn how to type. Because some details and some skills just don't do anything for me. I think it's because, in my mind, I'm living in a reality. You know, and it's my reality. It's not the reality dictated to me by you, you know, and you could be anybody. I don't, hmm. It's not so much the voting. It's the violence and the apathy and and the dishonesty, the, the things that at one time in life, I, I, I use those things as tools to acquire. And at halfway through life, I decided, no, that's not the right way to do things. And it wasn't other people telling me. I just made my own mind up. This is how I am. And I, for years, thought other people were just like that. Hey, you know, you just, one day you wake up to your, and you go, hey, you know what? I think I'm going to change my life and do this. <clears throat> well, I think anybody could do it, but they all tell me they're limited. They got responsibility. I got a job. I used to create work out of necessity find out what people needed and then learn how to do it if that's what it took like wow i was in la i don't know i was roaming around and i ended up in the valley and for a while i was having fun just sleeping in the damn park having uh, no responsibility but i was the only bum in the park that had a, a, a bank card so i could eat every day and get cigarettes and shit like that but Everybody else was living hand to mouth, and I wanted to just be invisible. Anyway, so after a few weeks of that, I got bored of it, and then I found some work, and then I eventually I found a, a part of uh, the valley where I wanted to, to live and hang out, and then in time, I, I would meet more people and more people. I met this guy that did uh, electric work. He was, uh, he was a speed freak trying to not be a speed freak. So he he couldn't really do the jobs alone anymore. He was kind of high and kind of not high some days. And Well, we ended up getting along, and he taught me about electric work. And the things that he taught me were the doorway to uh, understanding Larry Woods. I think that today, knowing what I know about the little bit I know from doing installations and working on hot wires and, and him, you know, fucking with me like on a job I'd, I'd ask him and go hey is that is that box hot and he'd say no and I'd, I'd go to do whatever I had to do on the box and it would be hot and psh, I'd go you said it was was it was off and he says why don't you learn to check for yourself what are you going to do if I'm not here oh yeah I'm going to depend on you and, and you're not going to be here I get it and instead of being mad at him for you know being a prick and getting zapped I felt I learned how not to get zapped because I took on a job that I had no idea what I was doing when I started. I went, I don't know nothing. You have to teach me everything. So he did. <laughs> he did it his way. And for some reason or another, nobody else could work with Brian. Brian was very, uh, he was a very moody guy, and but he could score the greatest jobs. He, The places we were working were like um, uh, Malibu, <laughs> private homes out in Malibu, uh, not on the water, but just a little inland. And then when that when that job, those we had two jobs in Malibu, and then we went to uh, North Hollywood to do the entire floor of a, a production studio that was upgrading to this new recording stuff, so they needed all their plugs changed out. And I was working on different levels of electricity. I didn't know, I I didn't know anything about it, so I had to. to pay attention and learn <laughs> my, my ass was on the line and I, I told this one before he said to take off the certain thing he said stay away from the light well I think I smoked a joint before we got to work that night and I heard everything up to stay away from the light so when I when I pulled the light well the wires were hot and the, the voltage was uh it wasn't enough to kill me, but it, it blew me off the wall. 
And he heard me down the hall, and he comes, didn't come running, but he came in to see if I was all right. He goes, oh, took a look at me. So my needle nose had a had a hole about half the size of a dime. <laughs> he says, ah, you figured out how how welding was invented, genius. I told you to stay off that light. <laughs> so, again, another, you know, sometimes some of us need that to learn a lesson. We we don't listen to people. We think we listen to them. I thought I listened to them, but until I took the action, I didn't really know whether I did or not. I just assumed I had. And over the years, I've acquired a little bit of patience when I'm playing with electricity. <laughs> I don't assume I know what I'm doing anymore. You know, I've slowed down. You know, I was like 30. How old was I when I was doing that? That was 1990 and 8. So I was 37 or 38 when I was doing this. A lot younger. And I, ah, the lessons learned in life are, they're so personal. You know, everybody sees what they see, how they see it. And all you got to go on is you compare something to something you already know, something you've already heard, and and there's no way to just enjoy a new you know, something new in life doesn't happen that way. It's it, My mind always goes to, wow, that was just like this, and this is just like that, or that should be like that, and it's not. Comparison, comparison, comparison. So I've tried to make more of a conscious, like a step towards stopping comparing every fucking thing to something else and just looking at it and understanding what it is that you're looking at. You know, all that stuff's vibrating molecules and atoms to one guy, right? And to another guy, it's a tree. <laughs> and somewhere in the middle is what it really is. But who knows? We we got the freedom, and I try to enjoy it more than control it. I go with it. You know, eh, so the tree's vibrating. I wonder, how come I can't see it vibrating? Hmm. Maybe it's because I'm not looking at it with the right information i wonder i saw a picture of two objects being um seemingly making contact but in in the the magnification of the shot it shows you that contact is never made so i can put my two fingers together right in front of my face and i can look at them and i can push them together but yet at some molecular level, there's still space between my fingers. <laughs> so what I figured out was the nerves, the nerves aren't, they're not solid. You know, there's a nerve here and a nerve there and they feel the connection, but the eye picks up is different than what you feel. Well, where do you, how do you even explain why something like that would matter to, uh, a fisherman, a guy who makes a living, you know, doing this, or a gal that uh, does that, whatever have you. And common ground to get into these weird conversations, the internet and coffee shops. But well, I'll be done in thirteen, baby. So just keep me a plate hot, or I'll kill this thing when the food is on the table. Yeah, I don't believe I lasted this long. It's uh, it's not my uh, it's not my strength to sit alone, and be informative, but I got a lot of I you know people say well knowledge and I've come to the decision, I I, th I have a lot of ideas and I have a lot of opinions, but I don't have is a lot of knowledge you know knowledge what what exactly would knowledge be, I'll close the show out with this idea and when dinner's ready I'm gonna make my goodbyes, uh. But knowledge, hmm. I can't say I really know anything. I think a lot of stuff, and, and I believe, and I look at things and identify them. But, but what the fuck do I know? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to go with that road. And it might sound, some people take it, and they beat me with it, and go, well, that's just not committing to anything then. Uh, uh, uh. Well, I'm committing to... Uh, it could be whatever I want it to be. So I'm the one that's going to control that. And other people's judgments and opinions, uh, they sway my outlook. So I have to control the opinions that I'm going to listen to. 
And with the knowledge that I've acquired over the years, I'd say that if if I was on a side, I wouldn't. I would think I was giving myself a bad way to go. But in my lifetime, I've accepted that, you know, we live in a, a world of illusion and whatever it is, it always turns out that the explanation is the opposite of what we were told from the beginning, no matter what the topic. Um, so regarding knowledge, nah. You know, and we'll go to the the world is round, the world is flat crap. Even it doesn't matter what it is. What matters is the side of the fight that you stand on against the other guy. So I refuse to even stand on the fucking argument. And that's the stand I'm taking. I don't even care if it's round. I don't care if it's flat. All I'm saying to people using this point is it's a way to to divide us. And it works. And they don't need to divide. I did? No. Wow. He says I went three hours. I think you're kidding. I thought I did too. Holy fuck. I, okay. I got high. Good night, everybody. <laughs> fuck. I didn't know. I I thought I was going. All right. I thought I went seven. Oh, I did go three hours. Whoops. See ya. <laughs> I'm, I'm out.